Today's podcast, ladies and gentlemen, my friend, Mark Norman. This is Hello. Yo, yo, check, check. Um, hey, hey, oh, cool. Yeah, so she was going through a midlife crisis, and now her and her friends are going to start a podcast. Hey. I was like, just fucking do it. Who yeah. cares? Who gives a shit? It's like Lynette Car- Carolla. You and... Um, you and your posse, the New York posse. Uh, we got a good crew over there. Is have been making me laugh hysterically lately. Oh, hey, thanks. So fucking funny. I hung out with Soder in Calgary. Yeah, great guy. Yeah, and uh, he was like, he was like, dude, you gotta. He's like, I told him oh, you're gonna be on the podcast. He's like, you're gonna fucking love Mark Norman. Ah. He's like, he's got. Apparently, you're everything we all wanted to be when we were young comics. Well, I was. In a, I was <laughs> I was in a relationship for like 12 years. For so real? I was like high school sweetheart, college, moved to New York together, the whole thing. And then we had a brutal breakup. I got caught cheating. It was You got caught cheating? Yeah, I was, it was Were you br- always cheating? Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I was by the way, I'm a serial cheater. Okay. Except with my wife. I've never cheated on my wife. And that was a conscious decision. Yes, yeah, smart. When I, when I, when we, but no, but it was just we were laying I, I said this in the machine story when I told on my special, but we were laying in bed one morning. Oddly enough, I think we already had kids, but I, and and I just hadn't cheated because I was in love. And yeah. then one morning, I thought, "Oh, this is what life's about: is this moment with me and the girls mm-hmm. and the dogs." Uh-huh. And I was like, "I don't ever want to fuck this up." And cheating, as you know, you don't. I don't think people go out to cheat on purpose. Sure, it's just something gets thrown at you, and you're like, "Ah, oh, how often am I going to get this?" Exactly, and it fucks you up mentally because you know you come home after you cheat, and you have to like fake it all day, and it's just eating at you, and your guilt. You feel like less of a man a little yeah. bit after you cheat. So yeah, don't do it. No, yeah, no. I've I, I've only had like a couple opportunities where girls have like tried mm-hmm. like hit on me, and I just I just know what I want, you know. And I'm also 44. It's like I don't fucking I don't know. And you've done the thing where you've cheated and right after you go, oh god, immediately that was so stupid, immediately, and then you want her gone immediately, yeah, brutal. Um, so you got caught cheating? Yeah, it was uh. We lived together in a tiny shoebox in Manhattan, and you know it was already ten. So wait, had you already started comedy? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I've been oh, I'm gonna shut probably. these doors. Someone's laying oh, a fucking egg. Yeah, that's a hell of a coop you got out there. Holy hell! This I gotta just describe this. I hate to use the term man cave, but this is a hell of a shed we're in. This is beautiful. It's, it's just. From, it's from the TV show Man Cave. Oh, all right. Well, that that's why. It's from the TV show, so it's a legit man cave. You I can got totally say it. Two flat screens, a kegerator. You got. Uh, I love the the David Letterman framed yeah. uh, cue cards. Yeah, that's amazing. Just whiskey everywhere, and looks like a killer sound system. Some wine. Oh my god, I love it. Yeah. All right. So, so you guys, you started stand up. Yeah. So wait, wait, where did you grow up? I grew up in New Orleans. Are you serious? Born and raised uh, in Treme, right outside the French Quarter. Are you? Se- Every time I say serious, my fucking phone answers. Oh, that's cute. Um, so wait, I didn't know you were from New Orleans. Did you oh, know yeah. Sean Patton there? Yeah, he was the guy. Are you shitting? He was me? like the guy we all looked up to. He started a little before us, and he moved to New York first, and. He was like a big, big comic for me. So, just for everyone listening, because I think a lot of my listeners are like, like this Death Squad loyal LA fan base podcasting group. Mm-hmm. I think, I think most of them probably know you and Joe List. Uh-huh. But your posse out in New York's like Soder, Big J, Joe List, Bargazzi. Um, yeah, this guy uh, Sam Marill. Sam Marill is hilarious. I worked with him a long, long time ago. Uh, he's a beast. Yeah. yeah, he showed me pictures of you guys shirtless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was, was a big deal for him. Fuck. Yeah, he's and, a killer. And you guys are all, I'll say, so like, just to put, frame things out for everyone listening, um, Bobby Kelly, Jim Norton is a class above me. They're, yeah. they're a great above me. Then it's me, I think Dimitri Martin, probably Mike Birbiglia, mm-hmm. that generation. And then, I, I, and then Big J and you guys are the class right below us, I think. Yeah, Big J's above me, I'd say. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, Big J and Kurt, I kind of yeah. clumped them into you guys. Okay, I'll, I'll take clump them it. into you guys, I think. I would say, despite her success, I'd say Amy's in you, with you guys. Yeah, class. Yep, yep. And so, but your so your group because like Nate, we looked we looked up to Nate. Nate gave us a lot of advice. Nate Bergazzi. Yeah, and uh, yeah, then Joe List. Joe List had a weird one because he was funny, but he was a huge alcoholic, so he didn't get anywhere. And then he quit drinking, and then now he's like on Conan all the time and blowing up and opening for Louis. By the way, I wish I could. I wish that he would uh, relapse and party with me because uh, the oh. stories I hear about Joe List, Jesus, I, I've never laughed so hard in my fucking life. Yeah, he was an animal. He, he was a mess. He there. I I'm, I'm, I won't tell the story. I'll, I'll wait. I'll save it for. 
Well, I think it's on This Is Not Happening. About him shitting in that girl's yeah. shoe? Oh, my God. So check that out on YouTube, folks. <laughs> it's a doozy. So you started stand-up in New Orleans? Yeah, which is like, no, there's a scene there now, but when I started, it was once a week, maybe, at an open mic, you can get on stage. We'd drive to Baton Rouge, drive to Lafayette, drive to Texas just to get some stage time. So we, so do you, do, you, do you connect with like a redneck background at all? A little. My parents are like the most liberal New Orleansy people ever. My dad's got a seersucker suit on. He's drinking a mint julep. My mom's yeah. like, she's a big Creole chef. So uh, I don't really have the redneck. I have more of the the uh, Creole. Like the, the the it's almost like redneck with a French influence. Yes, a highfalutin. We call him yeah, a little highfalutin. My dad's kind of gay a little bit. You know, <laughs> we we call it coon ass. Like ah, I guarantee you, going down to the bayou. You know, yeah. it's got that little twang in it. But uh, yeah, so you, we started there, and it was just fun, and we would drink our faces off and do comedy every now and then, and then I was like, this is what I want to do. I had nothing going on. I was rudderless. So comedy was like a big thing for me just because it gave me something to do, gave me something to look forward to, and I had crazy stage fright. So eventually, after like eight months, I moved to New York, and boy, that was rough. I like that, though. That's what I, I did. I did stand up one time in Tallahassee and then moved to New York. Oh, like, one time. One time I was like, "That's amazing." Did you want to hear something really arrogant? Please. Uh, I did it one time, and then I called my dad. I had to go home. This is before cell phones. I went home after it. I called my dad. I thought about this the whole ride home. I was stone sober, and I was like, uh, "When we were kids, Brad Radke was a pitcher for the uh, that we grew up with. He ended up pitching for the Twins, going pro and playing like thirteen seasons. He was Jesus. a great pitcher. And growing up, everyone's like." Oh, yeah, you're, he's going to go pro. He's going to go pro. My dad was like, look for the thing in life, like Brad Radke, where everyone was like, oh, that's definite. That's his for sure mm. thing. And I told my dad, I said, I found my Brad Radke Look thing. at that. <laughs> I was like, it's stand-up comedy. This is what I, I had no material. I went on stage and spoke for 20 minutes without material. 20 minutes? And fucking murdered. Murdered what? for Murdered for, for in respect. For a new guy. Yeah, for a first time on stage. And I was like, this is it. Wow. What, you just talk about stories and drunks? No fucking clue. I do wow. remember I made a, a, a AIDS reference. Uh-huh. I made, I did a, made a Scooby-Doo reference. Mm-hmm. Um, I talked about jerking off in a cheeseburger. All right. Which is like, and then, and then, and then I sent that tape to Jason Steinberg. Whoa. Yeah. And he was like, I, yeah, move up to New York. I think you got something. Hold How'd you know about Steinberg? This, I had been written up in Rolling Stone magazine and this guy, Adam, Sp- no, I think it's Adam Spiegelman. He was a producer mm. on Kimmel now. Okay. He was doing this thing, American Journal, and he came and did an interview with me. I told him I wanted to be a comic, and that he's like, do it, and record it, and send it to this guy, Jason Steinberg. And so I Jesus. did that. Jesus. You must have been a cocky bastard. No, I, no. I, well, I was famous at the time. I was very, oh, right. very famous. Right, right, right. Like, in, in, in respects to, like, even, like, like I was legit famous because i was written up in rolling stone and that's when there's no reality television right cable cable n- numbers weren't the way they are now they weren't like tons of cable networks so right right up in rolling stone was a really big deal. sure you had I like mean, a lot of lore around yeah you. oprah wanted to do an interview with me Jesus. i was doing radio interviews all the time uh, oliver stone option the rights to my life and so i was like i just i remember benny lazara one of my buddy's dad's called me and he was like you're never gonna get an opportunity like this again I take advantage of everything yeah and so i was just like fuck it i'm gonna do stand-up but then i moved to new york and got my dick knocked in the dirt yeah me that too. is immediately it was ugly but did you get your dick knocked in the dirt in life or in comedy because for me it was both so okay so you got this chick you guys moved to new york together i moved first because she had no money i didn't i moved up there with four hundred dollars i moved <laughs> way out to brooklyn in crown heights and crown heights is like coming up but when i lived there it was brutal it was ugly like i'd get like you're on the wrong side motherfucker like shit like that just walking down the street and uh my landlord died of aids the first year i got mugged three times in first year and uh i got bed bugs so it was just like it was like the city was trying to spit me out and luckily i was young i was like 23 so i could take it and i was drinking a lot just to like deal with the fear and everything and You know, you still had great moments. Like, I remember waking up one day and seeing snow. I'd never seen snow before, you know? Yeah. So, like... Dude, the, as a Southerner... Yes! When you have that first snow... Me and my buddy, Tony Hernandez, you probably know Tony. He runs... Uh, he runs... He's... Never mind. Anyway, right. he's... he's He knows... you. I'm sure you guys know each other. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you after the show. Um, he, he was from Florida, too. And that first day... Yeah. 
he was like, he called me. He's like, dude, we're going to the White. I think it's White Horse Tavern. Yeah, yeah. He's like, we're gonna go fucking drink. It's, and it was like, <laughs> it was like ten in the morning, and we just went straight there and started drinking, got weed, smoked all day, walked around. We'd never seen it like that. Yeah, it's beautiful, and it's yeah. like I was hung over. I remember looking out the window like a kid on Christmas, and I just didn't care about the hangover. I went outside and opened my mouth. You know, you let it fall in. Oh wow! I had a crazy roommate. Uh, he was from Luling, Louisiana. He was like this prodigy comedian he started when he was 15 and he was killer and he moved to new york he cried on the ride up because he was he never left louisiana i'm not gonna say his name because i'm does he still doing comedy yeah he lives here now in la do i know him i don't think so he's kind of like in, introverted weird guy but he's hilarious and he's kind of still in his shell he never really grew up he just moved to new york when he was 18 and he was a crazy, uh, what do you call it, a Southern Baptist. Oh, but he wow. was too scared to go to the church in our neighborhood because it was like all black. So he would just pray in front of the TV with the televangelists. Holy so shit. like that was a weird thing to wake up to on Sunday morning, you know. But great guy, still doing it. And he's going to blow up. He's just got to like get over that hump. Because, you know, I was partying in high school. He never did that. So he, like, got real into drugs and tried to get laid and everything. So he kind of put comedy on the back burner. So now he's back into comedy and it'll, it'll happen. Kind of want to do a podcast with this yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. He's an interesting guy. Uh, but, yeah, so New York, the, the muggings were brutal. I was blacking out too much. I had a job from 9 to 6.30 where I filed papers and, you know, just – it was a hard, hard couple of years. And Did you go to college? Yeah. Where? I went to LSU, but uh, I finished – I skipped my senior year and finished online in New York. Oh, to start stand-up? Yeah, just to get up there. Wow. By the way, online college is a joke. <laughs> I mean, it's just so easy. It's just like you spend – you have to spend like 20 minutes online. That's what they call it, just spending time online, and then you're done. So you can just watch TV while you're online. It's so crazy how I, easy it is. I had to finish college – uh, this is before online, and so I had to finish uh, the Florida State correspondence classes, which are akin to the prison system. Uh -huh. It's the same classes you take in the prison system. Wow, so that's easy as hell. No. Really? I So difficult that I, <clears throat> I it literally, I almost didn't graduate college. Would you mail it in? I had to mail it in. They give, they give you a fucking textbook yeah. and say, read it and write a paper on it. Oh, my God. And you're like, oh, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. They give you a test. And they'd be like, you're going to answer the qu – like, they give you tests. and But mostly I was I was in – my my classes were in literature, so it was a lot of – I read all the classics. But it made me smarter. I'd never read a book really before then. Yeah. And, like, I just was a part – I just partied. That's good for you, though. And you read, read all those like, books. And then I read, like, Grapes of Wrath and all that shit. Yeah. So – I mean, I guess you could pay some guy to read it and write it, but it's good that you did it. Yeah. I wrote a – I know everything that you need to know about Viking longships. Oh wow, that's so, exciting! So, so you you get mugging. Yeah, the brutal. chick finally comes up after what? How long? She, she comes up to have probably like eight months or nine yeah. months. So it was a rough, rough few months. And she got there, and then she wanted to move in, but I was too scared. Then she cried, so I said okay. And then uh, we moved in together, and that was kind of fun for a while. I'm living with a girl, I'm 23. We're both poor, we're both artists, you know. Yeah. And uh, sex all over the apartment and good times, but then it slowly dwindled because it was just. Yeah, you know, it's this small apartment, and just the tension is rising. And when it, you, you know you come home and she's there, you're like, oh fuck, yeah. You know, right when you hear her in the other room, you're like, fuck, god damn it. So uh, that got ugly real fast. Then road work started kicking in. So then you're like, this is amazing. I'm out in hotels and I'm flying and I'm on, I'm in San Diego. I'm in Detroit. I'm in you know what Rochester, and it was just so fun. Who you're out with you, your friends. Were you, who were you, were you touring with Amy yet? I was touring with Amy. I was touring with like I would open for Derosa, Tommy Jonigan, Tom Papa, all these people. Yeah, you you have a <laughs> great you have your stand up. You and Nate and Soder, all you guys, your stand up is. I, I'd say it's different. Even Joe mm -hmm. is different than than what I do entirely uh -huh. it's well, first of all it's really great joke writing oh, like you, you like uh, i said watching nate the other day and then watching your special i was like oh they probably never get nervous going in to do a gig going like fuck i hope this goes well because <laughs> yeah because you're you're it's it's almost like the math adds up it you're gonna laugh well i you know people always say like you're, you're you guys are joke guys i'm like i don't know how else to get laughs yeah i don't know what else to do i thought we were all joke guys you yeah. write a joke and if it works you keep it well it's so funny someone i was with uh chad zumak this weekend and we were talking about this i won't mention this guy's name oh yeah well i don't give a fuck uh <laughs> this guy uh john morgan the raging cajun do you know who oh he yeah is? everybody tells me about this guy yeah he's well he's like a road legend yeah he's a road legend and uh 
I mean, the clubs love him. He sells out every show. Is that right? Yeah, sells out every show. Doesn't have a Twitter. Doesn't have a Facebook. Wow, I love never that. Never been on television. Yeah. Wife hit the lottery. What? Wife hit the lottery, so he, money's not an issue to him. Oh, my He just God. does it because he loves it. Oh, does whatever dates he wants. That is amazing. But he is an example of, of more of what – he's a very far to the right example of what I do. Like – I don't like. I don't. I don't know if I have set up punches in my act. Like, uh-huh. I, I mean, I feel like I do. But you know where the laugh's going to be. I that, do. That's a punch. But, yeah. Like, I said something the other day, and it got a big laugh, and I was like, I don't know if that. I don't know if that was. I said I didn't really sign up to be a parent. I signed up to be a dad. Yeah. And everyone started laughing, and I was like, I don't know if that. I don't know that's where a the joke. I, yeah. I don't know. Now but, you tweet that. That'll get some hits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like, but yeah, you guys are all. You guys are all like. It's almost like. Um, it's almost like New York comedy. You know? Yeah, well, I think in New York, the audiences are kind of like, what do you got? Prove it, asshole. Bring it on. And you have to be efficient. In L.A., I feel like you know it's a little more laid back and just part of the culture. You can kind of talk and flow a little bit. You know, you can go in and out, but in New York, it's got to be boom, boom, A to B, A to B, A to B, or they just check out. That's so funny. When I started, it was the exact opposite. Really? Yeah, cause, yeah because the New York style was like Bobby Kelly, Godfrey, mm-hmm. uh Coriali, like a more like conversational ah. mess with Puerto Ricans. There's right. a black guy going to jail. All right, that's right. part of my act right. now. Yeah, and yeah. when I first got out here, I, I opened for Drew Carey um, at the Hollywood Improv on Wednesdays. That's he a was, big gig. It was really great. He was the coolest dude. I still don't know the guy. I never really hung out with him, but he thought I was cool and put him up. And uh, I remember the first time I was like on stage and my brain went, I hope there's a Puerto Rican in here. Oh, wow. And I was like, fuck, I don't have any jokes. That's I didn't amazing. Have any, like, I, had, <laughs> I had like stories, like yeah. some stories that were, a, but they were too long winded. I was like, I need a set up punch. I need, right. Like, I need to get a laugh quickly. Wow. And I felt like that was the LA style and New York was this like fucking, you know, like a big J. Like, yeah, you know, just yeah, meandering right. and fucking with the audience but what about like dave attell and he wasn't he around because he's the quickest yeah. guy ever you know attell and hedberg were, oh, wow. uh were definitely joke guys gaffigan was a go- joke guy there were some yeah there were definitely i mean it's probably the same as it is today half yeah half. that's you're probably right yeah. i mean i'm i tell i'd sit in the back of the store or back of the cellar and just i could never do what he did i it's literally amazing. was like i would be like i my versions of jokes were like um this is so bad but i was like i wrote a joke one time do you think uh, Papa Smurf's middle name is Boner? Papa Boner Smurf. <laughs> I was like, that was my that was the best joke writing I could do. Uh huh. That's that's funny. Well, it's funny because Dave Attell, you know, all comics talk about him. He's never on any lists. He's never like I'd like to see him on Comedians in Cars with Coffee. You know, get him in there. Why is he not part of the the whole? Comedy, it's like Cool Kid Club. You know, they'll put like Lena Dunham in there or something. Like, put Dave Attell on that list. Yeah, I don't. I. I, I I don't get the I don't get the um, GQ top ten comics to watch list. I've never understood that. I know. That. I hate it. It's not well. It's not well. It's not representative of who we find funny. Right. Right. It's, like, it's who. It's whose publicist reached out to them and said, yeah, "Hey, man, exactly. can you get my client on exactly. this?" Exactly. Yeah. It's Aziz number one. What are you crazy? Come on. <laughs> There's I so many. I, I mean, I, the thing that, that blows me away about Aziz, I will say this: he was not nice to me when I first met him, mm. and he and. By the way, he wasn't famous. So, yeah, yeah. So he was not nice to me as a regular person. <laughs> At least he's genuine. <laughs> At least he's across the board. Yeah. <laughs> registers. But like he was not nice and I tried to talk to him. Yeah. Because he was because he was just a I mean like this sounds horrible but he was just the one minority out of a bunch of white comics right. sitting at the table, and I was like trying to be nice, and yeah. he was being so fucking distant. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Fuck this guy!" Yeah, and so I didn't say that, but I was, uh, but, um, but I when he was in that movie, comedian or what? What's the movie that Seth Rogen and Adam Sandler? Oh, Funny People. Yeah, Funny People. By the way. The joke act he had made me laugh hysterically. Oh, the Randy the thing? The bad guy? Yeah, yeah. I was like, this guy's fucking killing no, me. No, that was funny. But in a way, that's just kind of his act. You know, that he yeah. does that rhythm and he yells. That Randy guy was just a little more, you know, aggressive. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I feel like that's a, that's him. Yeah. But, but yeah, yeah, that was funny. So wait, who were the... Uh... Who was is he? Is he's is an L.A. guy, right? Yeah, I think he's L.A., but he'll come to New York all the time to yeah. work out. Uh, he's there, and he does like a lot of bumping. Does he really? Yeah, so we all just, I mean, you know, I get it. He's a star, 
but it's a lot of like Judd Apatow will come to the cellar and he'll put his avails in. Yeah, he's amazing. He's the nicest guy ever. He'll be like, "Hey, uh, can I come in on Tuesday at eight thirty? And they're like, "Sure, you got it." So you know he's on the list. But Aziz is just like, "I'm going to do forty five when I show up." So it kind of screws everybody. Oh yeah, I just leave. Yeah, if, if that happens, I just leave. I go, yeah, I guess I'm not going to be doing stand up tonight. Right. I just, I, I mean, and I don't do it out of like a malicious way, like or like, oh fuck you. Like Dane used to do that, and I'd be like, "Okay, cool, man, I'm going home." Yeah, like, I, cool. I've been waiting to have my d- cocktail, right? Because I, I don't have a drink until I get on stage. I'll bring one with me, uh-huh. and so I'm like, "Well, oh, go to have my cocktail. I'm going home." And I remember Rita hustling and being like, "Hey, hey, don't leave, don't leave." And I'm like, "I'm so sorry, but that's if I mean, if you're gonna let people, no, I'm not saying this to Rita, but yeah. like, if like if if the system is they come up and they bump everybody, then don't be shocked when the comics that you hired to work that yeah. night don't want to do it yeah what are you supposed to do just wait around for four hours no one bumps at the store anymore i N- saw that no one fucking that's bumps. the coolest you know why because fucking there's a there I, the fucking store this is my favorite judd apatow story i don't Please. know the dude never met him i never met him once in my life uh go to the store um get bumped for apatow but he's but he's on the list they're like hey judd's gonna stop in mm-hmm. and he they put him in for him 15 minutes fine totally fine totally fine tosh is there Okay. Yeah. Tosh goes up first. Judd goes up second. And then it's my turn. And I'm like, and you know, we bring each other up at the store. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, this is going to be uncomfortable. He's going to mispronounce my name horribly. Yeah. He's going to, he's going to be like, who's the next guy? And it's going to be uncomfortable because he's, he's the stamp of approval in the comedy world. You know, he's Uh the gold standard of comedy these days. Sure. And, uh, and he goes, all right, that's my time. All right, uh, I appreciate you guys letting me stop in. I, it means a lot. You know, I, I love stand-up. This next guy is fucking hilarious. You're going to love him. He's been on the Travel Channel. He's got a show Trip Flip. He's got a show Birth the Conqueror. Oh, um, my God. He knew your credits. Dude, I said, I was like, he could molest a fucking kid and I'll still have, have his back. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, dude, that guy, as soon as he did that, I went, I was like, humbled going yeah fuck man i will never not know someone's credits on stage yes like, if judd apatow can know mine and he doesn't know me right he just did the little bit of leg work going hey the next guy what's his deal and they said it how do i say his name you know yeah i was fucking like what a fucking monster see that's great because a he gives a shit about comedy and i think judd i don't know if i should say this but i think he's a little insecure about like look i'm a director i'm famous i'm not a i'm not a comic comic mm-hmm. so i think he goes in there kind of like uh, are they going to accept me? Even though we're just going, hey, put me in a movie, you piece of shit, you know. Yeah. But he's worried about being accepted, so he's going to do the research. And also, that shows that's a great thing because now you're a big name, so now you'll you'll look up and research. So it got you to do something Dude, better. Yeah, it's like one time I got a call time. I never was. I'm never on time for call times. I never have been. Yeah, and uh, I show up. We're in Amsterdam, and the 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 owner of the production company is waiting in the van. I go, what the fuck are you doing here? And he goes, call times at eight. If you're not early or late. And I went, ooh. Mm. I was like, God, that's a, you know what? That That is irresponsible that I just, in a weird way, I just go, five minutes, what does it matter? Yeah. You know, like 10 minutes, what is it? I'm getting coffee. Right. You know, and so I, when I saw that, I went, holy, I, that stuck in my head when he said, you're not, if you're not early, you're late. I went, oh shit. Oh yeah. You never heard that? No, I never, I never heard that until the day I was late. <laughs> Jeez, my dad said that when I was like four. Really? How tall are you? Uh, 5'10", 5'11". No. Yeah. Pretty short so guy. Taller. Oh, thanks. I have um, uh, lifts. So, so, so just out of curiosity, do you, what, like, what is it like? Cause I'm assuming there's fame around you all the time when you're on the road with Amy. Do you ever like, are you ever like, Hey, can I, can I, can someone put me in a movie or no, no, I don't know. I would, about fucking, I would totally, I would end up being like, I feel bad about everything I do. I always feel like a burden. I don't want to bug anybody. So I can, she's. People always say, yo, for Amy, why didn't she have you a writer on the show? I'm like, because she does enough for me. I'm on her private jet. I'm at her house going to a party. She feeds me. She puts me up. Like, I'm not going to just go, like, hey, how about a writing job, you whore? You know, like, I'm not going <laughs> to bother her. And uh, she put me in train wreck. I got cut out, but I was in it. Okay. So I've been on her show like eight times. So, uh, I mean, she does plenty. Yeah. And over her HBO special, her Netflix special, her, her so album. Were you with her on the, on, on, when did you start opening for? Geez, probably 2008, 2009. So you've been on this whole kind of crazy. I saw the whole thing. I saw the the roast. I saw her get her own show. I saw the movie. We would go out drinking and did, she would be at home writing the movie at the in the hotel. Really? Writing train wreck, yeah. Did just out of curiosity, did we party together in Seattle? Yes. Right? I mean, no, I think it was Portland, Portland. actually. Yeah. Fuck we went yes. to a strip club. God 
Damn that was it. a great night, and you, I was so hungover. I remember I was just like, I'm not drinking for four days. I'm so hungover. And you were like, do this shot. I was like, I can't. And you're like, do it. I was like, if I do this shot, I'm going to puke. And you're like, do it. And I did it, and I puked. <laughs> <laughs> but I kept drinking. And then I saw you at the airport at 6 a.m., and you had a beer in your hand. Yeah, still drinking. Yeah, I was very impressed. Yeah, that's a, yeah. well, that that's my mo i yeah i yeah. can't i i can reward myself i get up early like i got off stage at like one yeah yes two days ago mm-hmm. saturday night or sunday morning my car picked me up at four and i said okay if i can get like two hours sleep then i'll get i'll get myself a cocktail and then <laughs> and then and i was like and then that'll write the boat immediately as soon sure. as i get a little bit of a buzz i'm like oh i'm fine and so have you tried Motive Pure? Have you heard of this? No. I did Drunk History, and I was talking to the guy who, who I forget his name, but uh, Derek, Derek Waters, and he was like, I was like, look, I can't wait to do the show, but I got to let you know I get the worst hangovers, like two-day hangovers. They're brutal. And he's like, oh, I got a thing. It's called Motive Pure. It's They give it to athletes to stay hydrated. He's like, I haven't had a hangover in four years. I'm like, oh, my God. He's like, get them on Amazon. Go nuts. So I ordered a bunch. I do Drunk History. I drink like... Uh, a third of a bottle of scotch. I really go after it. And uh, a third of a bottle of scotch. Is that a lot? I don't know. I drink. It's like a that gold label, but I drink a lot of it, more than half. And I really went hard because I wanted to be funny for the show. And he's like, "Here's your motive pure." And it's like a little shot. I drank it. Is this it? That's it. All yeah. Right, I'm buying a box right now. I drank it. I can get it by tomorrow. There you go. So it'll be good for your hangover tomorrow. But uh, I put it down, and I wake up. I've never been more hungover. I puked my brains out. I was shitting blood. I was fucking... I was. Uh, I had a gig that night. I had to cancel the gig. I couldn't get out of bed. Blood. I was like regarding Henry. I was in bed. I couldn't move my toes. <laughs> I couldn't get out of bed. It was brutal. Oh, my God. That, that, that shit... I think you got to like drink a lot of it or something, but I, I overrode it with the fucking scotch. <laughs> but try it. You might like it. Um, Didn't work for me. Do you still party? Oh, yeah. I'm, yes. I yeah, had a crazy weekend in Columbus. Great city. Oh, were you? Uh, Funny Bone. Yeah. Yeah, great time. Oh, wait, yeah. I just saw your... I think I was there and I saw your name on the Oh, list. yeah, yeah. Maybe, yeah. I had a blast. What a fun town. They call it the Austin of the Midwest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which, I don't know, seems a little weird, but uh, good times. Great club. Have You, you got to go to Liberty Township. I'm doing that in two weeks. Are you really? Yeah. Uh, or, or I was just there, and uh, I'll tell you the one thing you're going to... I, I, that I think every comic notices their fucking sound system is amazing. I keep hearing that it's the best sound you've ever had. Great. It's like you hear yourself, but it's not overwhelming. Yeah, I fucking I love those those two clubs because you can pack them out and you can make like legit money. Yeah, yeah, and I hate doing the meet and greet after, but I just suck it up and I do it and you get a couple numbers and yeah, it's uh, it's a cakewalk out there in the Midwest. Did you get laid this weekend? Oh boy, oh boy, did I? <laughs> I mean, it's you know that some curly-haired New Yorker shows up, and you look you look exotic out there. Yeah, it's a good time. It's fun. So we, so yeah, that's what uh, what Soder was like. Yeah, Mark's numbers are through the roof. <laughs> well, I went hard, man. You know, I was I never got laid in high school and all that, so I just put my focus into that. And getting laid, it's a real art form. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Yeah, so I just got good at it. It was like open mics. I got shot down for uh, for months and months, then got better and better. And then you get on Twitter, I mean, uh, Tinder and Bumble, and that's a game changer. So wait, so how does, like, I'm so far removed from the game. What oh, does it wow. look like when you go on the road? Is like, girls, I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of girls that have seen you with Amy. Yeah, that so they, helps. And they come out to the show. and they're I mean, like, it's 10,000 people. We're doing arenas with Amy, so it's all women, and they can't fuck her. So you get quite a trickle down. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's fish in a in an arena. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, it's a good time. It's a good time to be alive. And comedy's hot right now. It's yeah. hotter than it's ever been. So I'm I'm still young. Got a and head you, of hair. And you don't and you don't do your act isn't put isn't a get pussy act. Not really. No. Because that, that is de, that is debilitating for comics. Yeah. Is there some comics that my generation especially I won't say names but I I can say them and you go a hundred percent dudes whose act was built around being yeah. a cute guy <laughs> right non threatening guy totally kind of funny but not never anything edgy right and then. Okay, let's let's go. Yeah, yeah. And they ruin their they ruin their careers. You think so? Oh, I can name names. I won't, but I'll type it in this. Interesting. And you'll and you'll go and you'll go. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I notice if if it's a kill, you you could be talking about like how you hate Jews. If you're killing, it's the women are on board. 
Uh, yeah, but there's like there's guys like uh, this guy. Oh, and yeah, he's a hot guy. Yeah, yeah, and and you just go, oh man, he should have done more. Yeah, and he was hilarious. Yeah, and and the only the reason is he just every night he wanted to get laid. Wow. So he like you never challenge yourself as a comic. Yeah, like, right. I, I I say things on stage that even with uh, my my fans, people that have paid to see me, that I go like I go, this is. I'm going to lose some people on this. Right. Even people that are on board with everything I say, I'm going to lose some people. But if you don't do that, then you're not challenging yourself. Good for you. You got to do it. And there's people that don't, they just go, like there was a big thing at the store. There was a whole group of guys at the store just wanted to get pussy. Mm -hmm. So they never worked on their act. They just learned how to crush. Right. And then they were like, now once I've crushed, that's all we got. Right. So. Mm. No, I mean, you still got to be a comedian at the end of the day. So talk, tell me about the, when you got caught. How did you get how? Oh, boy. It was brutal, man. It's, it was uh, like iPhones were still kind of new, and I was in the shower, and I was always on edge, you know, like I'd gotten almost caught like 800 times, but gotten yeah. out of it. Had you cheated a lot? Yeah, pretty much every weekend, you know. Really? <laughs> yeah, it was bad, because we weren't fucking, because we were, we were sick of each other, yeah. but it was still like you shouldn't cheat, and I uh, almost got caught a bunch. And uh, I would just deny, deny, deny. And then I'm in the shower one day. Everything's going great. Good relationship. Birds are chirping. Sun's out. And I'm showering up, whistling. And my phone lit lights up on the coffee table. She's watching TV. And a naked picture pops up. And it's some blonde chick that I banged who knows where. And uh, she, I had no passcode then because it was kind of a new phone. And I, uh, she opens it up and starts reading the thread. And it was like, man, we did this and we did that. And it was so hot. And I want to do this again. I want to gargle that and suck on this and swallow that. And, all, and just me saying shit like, I can't wait to do this again and pull that and yank that and fist this. And uh, so the fucking bathroom door kicks open. She pulls the curtain back. And I remember being like, hey, coming in. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, she just showed me the phone, and it was the picture of the naked girl, and just dropped the phone in the tub. And I'm like, oh, shit. So I grabbed the phone. I jump out naked. And I'm just like in the living room like, hey, come on. What are you, crazy? Get out of here. No, no. She's nuts. Fuck her. And she's yeah. like, I read the whole thing. Fuck you. I knew. I knew it. I knew it. And, I'm, you know, you're naked. When you're naked, you look you look like an idiot. You know, you're naked and wet. It's like the flip-flop of Sarah, forgetting Sarah Marshall. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> So that was it after that. And then we tried to work it out, but it was never the same. And six months later, it was done. Yeah. And, and then, I, oh, sorry, I, we lived together and I, I just moved out and I was like, keep the place. I paid half the rent, just try to be a good guy out of guilt. And I just couch surfed for like a year. Really? Yeah. I, I fucked everything in that year. I mean, I, uh, I banged a chick in a homeless shelter. I was going on the road as much as I could. It was a. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Go back to the homeless shelter. <laughs> crazy story. I was, uh, I met a girl at a show. I got her number. We met up like a week later. I went to a bar called Alligator Lounge where you get a free pizza with every drink. So I met up met up with this girl, and she's just wolfing down these pizza slices, <laughs> putting them down. She was like a cute blonde chick. And uh, I was like, you all right? She's like, i got to be honest, I'm homeless. And I go, what? I'm homeless. <laughs> so uh, we started bonding on the homeless thing, and then she told me she's in a shelter. And I'm like, oh, so we're making out, we're making out. And then she pulls me away and goes, wouldn't it be crazy if we went to my shelter? And I was like, ha, yeah, yeah. Go back to making out, go back to making out. Pounding booze, pounding booze. Before I know it, we're in a cab on the way to the shelter. And that's a funny moment, by the way, being in a cab to a homeless shelter. <laughs> So we get there. It's way out in Brooklyn, big stone building. And uh, she's like, I just realized they're not going to let you in. It's pretty regulated, you know. So uh, there's this guy in the front. You have to, like, be buzzed into this huge gate, big metal gate that slides open. and goes, Arr! you know. Yeah. So uh, she has this big hobo key to the shelter. It's like a key with, a, like, a hubcap on it. And uh, she's like, maybe you could go in and just act like you own the place. Go in with the, sh the key and just walk right in. You won't have to sign in. I was like, all right, that's that's good. So I go in. I go, up eh, homeless, you know, <laughs> tough, riding the rails. You know, I'm swinging the key. And the guy's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. It's four in the morning. And uh, she just walks in and goes, hey, I'll sign in because she's actually there. Yeah. So they know her. So she goes, whatever you do, don't get caught. I'm on the third floor. It's the women's floor. You get caught on the women's floor, you'll go to jail because, like, you know, I can't go up and rape women. Yeah. <laughs> Bunch of hobos up there, you know. And I remember I walked in. There was this big pit. It was this big floor, and it was full of people on cots, people in sleeping bags, people crying, people screaming, people, like, 
kind of wrestling. It was it was wild. Babies crying. It was crazy. And I go up to the third floor and I run to her room and I open the door, swing the door open, and it's got two cots on the wall, jail style, stains on the walls, just shitty cracked window. And I was like, oh my god. She comes in like ten minutes later. We have crazy hobo sex. We go at it. Thank God I had a rubber. Who knows where she's been? And uh, the next morning I had this crazy like beer piss i had to get out of me like booze piss i had the big stomach and i was like i gotta pee she's like you can't go to the bathroom you'll get caught and i go ah, i gotta go it's an emergency so i get the key i run to the bathroom i'm peeing and a girl comes in i'm in the stall a girl comes in the bathroom I'm like oh shit so i have to sit down and pee you yeah. know so she doesn't know i'm a guy and she's just dropping fucking soup cans in there i mean this girl next to me hobo shit and i just pull my pants up and get the hell out of there i give her a key back i say thanks thanks for nothing i run home that's fucking crazy. It was wild, yeah. That's fucking insane. Yeah, so good times. What? So at the time you're couch surfing, where? How, how are you meeting people? Oh, I would just uh, drink at shows every night and just kind of Tinder, a lot of Tinder, a lot of Bumble, and I would Bumble all day, you know, and then be like, all right, we'll meet at eight. I got a show at seven, we'll meet at eight, and that was it. And hopefully if that worked out, I would sleep at her place. You know? Oh, wow. Yeah, so you just leave your luggage at a friend's house. I was on Staten Island. I was in Queens, Brooklyn. I was all over the fucking Now, who are you city. hanging out with in comedy at the time? Uh, the same guys. Same, same guys, crew, yeah. You guys are all still starting out together? Yeah, I mean, this was not that long. It was probably three years ago. Really? So, yeah. It was, you know. Three years ago? Yeah, yeah. Wait, how old are you? 33. God damn it. So this isn't. This is like 2013-ish. Yeah. 2014, yeah. So, okay, so. Oh, that you had that girlfriend that whole fucking time. Whole time, oh, my whole twenties gone. Shit. Yeah, it was wild. What was it when when you got when you got back into the game with sleeping with chicks? What was the thing that you noticed? Like, I always had a hard time. Dane told me this one time. He's like, you can't shut it off. I I, can't, I can never turn it off. Oh, you can't. Mm -mm. Interesting. I have a really hard time turning it off. Yeah. The comet can me. So when I get to the hotel room, when I get to the. Uh, Back to, I mean, it's been so long, I guess, back to my house mm -hmm. with the girl. I would keep fucking going. Oh, no. Yeah. Come on. How do you turn it off? I would turn it off because I'm, I'm a pretty introverted guy. Like Are I, you really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm a big, big introvert, big anxiety riddled weirdo. All really? kinds of anxiety. I had anxiety on the way here. You know, it's like, how's it going to go? Anything you don't know how it's going to go, a lot of anxiety. Really? Oh, I'm a mess. I can fake it pretty well. 10,000 hours. I'm an expert. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, I'm a mess. So that, that was the hardest part to me was seeming confident and cool because the whole time I'm just going, does she like me? Does she like me? Does she like me? Oh, my God. She yeah. hates me. I'm an idiot. I'm not that tall. I got to medium dick i wish i was bigger you know just freaking out about everything and uh yeah i mean i think when you kind of break open and become more real with the chick that's when you're gonna get laid yeah i don't know i I wouldn't i wouldn't know what to do now yeah well booze is the booze is like 80 percent of it yeah. you know you start drinking because for me the hard part was because i just wanted to fuck them yeah you know I, I hate to be that guy but i'm like i just want to fuck you you're I just want to make love to you, lady. Come on with the talking. How many times are you going to go, oh, yeah, get out of here. You're in sales. Come on. What are you crazy? You hate your mom. I know. I get it. Oh, your cat. You love that cat. How many times can you do that? You know? It was that every night. So, yeah, there was a lot of booze. That helped. Because the, the, uh, the moment from small talk to fucking, is, that's, that's an art. That yeah. is not easy. Yeah. So that was, that's what you're really learning how to do. That's crazy. Yeah. That was good times. I fucking... Love, I'd love that. So, so, uh, do you have anxiety about the special? Uh, well, the special, it was, it's already done. It's in the can. I edited it myself. That helped. You did? Yeah, that was brutal. It was fantastic. Man. Oh, I appreciate it. Really it really was. My, I was laying in bed with my wife. I'm watching it going, fuck, I don't have enough jokes in my act. That's all I was thinking. Was uh -huh. I was like, I was like, you know, I'm fucking, I was like, I was like, there's a, it, there's a real value in being able to get in and out of something. Right, yes. I completely agree. I love an ending. Yeah. I love knowing where it ends and then starting a new thing. Someone said that to me this past weekend or two weekends ago in Calgary. I, I said I said I've never really gotten a pause break in a in an in a a set. Mm -hmm. And and I, I didn't realize this. Kid's been doing stand up for fucking four years, the guy I'm working with. I wish I remember James Kennedy is his name. He's mm -hmm. Canadian. He's by the way, he's so amazingly talented. Really? He doesn't realize why he's talented, mm -hmm. but he's just because he's very authentic. Yeah. He just says things that really happen to him and you can you can taste it. You know, you can be like, "Oh, that he really did get busted skateboarding." Like, oh, like yeah, right. And so uh 
he said to me very insightfully, he goes, well, the reason they're clapping is because they knew it was over. And I went, because I've never gotten an applause break. I've never gotten an applause break on a joke, ever. Mm-hmm. I've never, like, you see dudes do Conan, yeah. and they say something, and then they yeah, clap, yeah, yeah. and they're like, thank you. And you're like, that's odd. Yeah. I've never done that. I've never gotten that because I don't write jokes that are that finish. You know? Really? Like, yeah, like, like, I would, I'll do a long weaving thing about my wife where it's like, like I have a joke right now that I've, it's, but it's more stories. Like I have this ziplining story that's like 10 minutes. So when I start it and, and by the way, I don't even know if you know it's over. I just keep going. I weave into something else. Right. I let right. that be my jumping off point for the next thing. Mm-hmm. But this one joke I did, it has a defined ending and I went, oh, you're right. Like a yeah. good, and letting them know you're, in and out of something yes. you're done is really fucking valuable. It's huge. It's the ta da. Yeah, that's it. You gotta have it. And uh, and I was watching your act, and then my wife's laying in bed next to me, and I wish I could remember the fucking joke, but she started howling, fucking laughing. Oh wow! Jeez. It's in the middle of your set. It's like 22 minutes in. Huh. I don't know. If that, I mean, not to figure it out. That means a lot to me. I can't believe you even watched it. Just of course I did. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, my manager sent it over. Wow. And then I sent it to Segura. <laughs> no way! Yeah, I'm a huge fan of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh I man, it to Segura, and I, I and I'll be very honest with you. I think I sent it to a few people. I might have sent it to Rogan too. Oh my god! Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. You guys have a good crew. Uh, we have a good. Uh, there's a. It's a good posse, and I think that. Uh, I think that's Rogan is the one that kind of was like. I know for a fact when I, I had a falling out with a guy mm-hmm. and. Uh, and Rogan was just one night was just very we were both a little high a little drunk and he was just like hey man you know you, you don't have to have shitty relationships you can have good friends and the, like there's a lot of people that want to be your friend you just got to allow them to be your friend because mm-hmm. I'm very closed off I wouldn't I do I have a really hard time making friends really mm, very you're the hard fun time. guy the social guy I'm very I'm I'm very uh, it's the same thing I can't turn it off like I can right. be fun but this but is off right. Yeah, yeah, this is off, but this is this is different. Okay. This is why I like my podcast. Mm-hmm. Is because I get to hang out. Like, if I saw you at the club, I'd be like, "What's up, Mark? Oh, yeah. great special! I love the special. Yeah, so cool, man. Uh, yeah, uh, so so just whatever we did at the very beginning, I would yeah. I do that, and then I'd be on my way. Right, I'm the same way. I'm yeah. the same way. Because you're like, I don't know where it's gonna go. What if it gets weird? What if I bother him? You know, so you just get out as soon as you can. It's the it's the reason you know that that night in Portland was so much fun because mm-hmm. I. I knew Amy very well. Right. We were, like, we did a TV show together, but we lived together in that TV show for, like, what, five weeks or whatever. Yeah, she loves you. And then we, 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 uh, I used to let her stay at my house. Wow. So my wife, we'd go out of town, and my wife would call Amy and go, hey, we're going to be out of town for a month. If you want our house, come out and do auditions. Yeah. And then when we were in town, she'd stay with my sisters. And so when you, when, and so there's not a, a ton of people that I can be, that I that I'm, oh, I'm I let my guard down. Mm-hmm. Rogan, Ari, Tommy, Joey, but like that. By the way, that list just happened like five years ago. Isn't that so funny? Yeah, it just happened. Yeah, you always hear about these guys like oh, I'm going to meet my high school chum. We're going out for a future. I'm like high school chum. I got rid of them years ago. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I I mean I sat with Rogan the other night at the store and talked. And I was supposed to go do roast battle, and we just ended up talking for like an hour. I love that. And then I was like, I missed doing roast battle. I fucking <laughs> good for you because I was like, and I'm, I hit. I was friend. like, I should leave, but then I was like, fuck that. I'd much rather this conversation. Yes, I'd much rather like because you don't get that a ton, right? And you don't get it on the road much. Like no. <clears throat> I'm the same way. I mean, uh, in New York, those cellar hangs, those diner hangs are oh. so key. I mean. It'll be five in the morning. I'm like, I have a six a.m. flight or whatever, or whatever, and you just can't leave. It's so hard to leave your friends, and you're like, I'll just stay up all night. Fuck it. Oh, I started thinking. Um, I was like, I was like, I think I'm going to go out to New York. I think I'm going to just go out to New York for like weekends or like weekdays to like hang out with people over there. Because I hung out with Soder this last week, mm-hmm. dude. We talked. No lie, for four hours a day. And yeah, we eat lunch and we talk for four hours. Yeah, it's the best. Four fucking hours, and then, and then go, go like go. We'll see you tomorrow, and then we will just do it again. And I was like, dude, I could do this. I, I love Big J. Big J is one yeah. of my favorite human beings in I the world. Big J. He's I was the like, best. I'll go out. I'll do bonfire. I'll do. I'll do Sim, Jim and Sam. Yep, and then, <clears throat> and then Opie or whatever, and 
just fucking bump around yeah and go and hang out at the diner i was like maybe i'll stay on ari's couch yeah and, just, and i'm i mean i'm a grown-up i have kids but that is so valuable oh it's key it's almost this sounds weird but it's almost like fucking because it's like you never get laid then when you fuck that girl you're like we're gonna fuck all night yeah it's the same with talking because you never get that interaction we're on our phones all day we're talking to crowds that's empty you know but when you talk to that other comic and you're really gelling oh my god it's it really is uh it's like my favorite part of the of the it's my favorite part of the business because I I remember coming up in a time when I wanted to be, I was the I would say the the at most epic time ever in comics hanging out was the cellar. Yeah. When when it was Keith Robinson, Patrice, it was like a DePaulo, it, it was an Geraldo. art form. That was that was that was the impetus of Tough Crowd. Yes. And I was there for that, but I was I was brand new. I was still like an open micer technically. You must have been terrified. Working the door at the Boston Comedy Club. I just hang out and listen. Yeah. <laughs> but I wanted to be in that I wanted to be in the conversation. Yes. I always wanted to have the conversation. But throwing that first sentence out was terrifying because they would just shit on it if it was oh, stupid, you know? I never did it. I yeah. was like I was like, nope. Oof. <sighs> but, I, I didn't know Patrice, but I I'd watched him a few times and I was a huge fan, but I saw one time uh, this guy went up to him and he was wearing like a yellow like raincoat and he just goes, hey, Patrice, buddy. He was a comic. I didn't know who he was, but he was like, hey, Patrice, what's shaking, buddy? And Patrice goes, man, get your fish stick ass out of here. <laughs> what was the guy? Uh, Mr. Gordon? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. He's like, get your Mr. Gordon fish stick ass out. And I was like, oh, my God, it's hilarious, but I could never do it. I could never say hi to him. I'm too too nervous. Yeah, I got lucky. Patrice was never really, I mean, I don't know. I don't really know the truth, but I, he was never really in at the cellar. Like he yeah. was never. Like, he was banned a lot. He was banned a lot, and I got to hang out with him because I worked the door at the Boston Comedy Club. Were you the, uh, doing stand up when that was around? I did the Boston a few, just the open mics. Um, and he would always hang out out front at the Boston, and so I got to know Patrice. I'd say really well, just because every night. By the way, it's so like I always say, like I, I was, I could, I became fans of people before they were famous. Mm-hmm. Like I've fucking knew patrice me bobby and bill all of us knew patrice was the funniest man alive yeah way before anyone else did right way but i mean i watched him he had a joke about michael j fox you ever hear this joke Mm-mm. he's like man <laughs> i see michael j fox up on tv with muhammad ali and this motherfucker's trying to outshake the champ uh. and he's like <laughs> And he goes, I wish you'd just be genuine in that moment. He's like, we raised all this money for uh, MS, whatever he had. What does he have? Uh, uh, Parkinson's. 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 He's like, I'd love for someone in the audience just to be like, Michael, that's fantastic. But what about uh, AIDS and cancer? And he goes, well, the problem with AIDS and cancer is I don't have that shit. You see this handshaking? This ain't AIDS, motherfucker. And, <laughs> I mean, I don't think he ever released it on a special yeah. anything. It was just him a throwaway. He told me a story about the cool kid in his neighborhood, Tony, mm-hmm. and how Tony picked up girls and how he learned how to pick up girls through Tony. But he had this, and these are his words, this gorilla-isms to his. Like, Tony would go up and, like, tap the girls in the back of the neck. Now, so, oh, no, I just go up I just fucking pound this bitch <laughs> Kang. <laughs> he was he man. He was really one of the true. Oh yeah, and I wish he was still around because he would have a whole new angle on Trump, oh. like that no one else has thought of, and that would be and it's so politically incorrect, but still genius. Yeah, you know, and that would be fun to hear. What's uh? Who were who were the first guys when you got to the city that you just blew your mind? You're like, oh fuck. Oh man, well, some guys don't even get talked about. Like Nick Griffin is amazing. Oh yeah. Gee, talk about joke writing. My God, that guy's yeah. killer, and he's clean and. He's got his character down so well, and he is that guy, that divorce sad guy. Uh, he blew my mind, and you know, obviously, like Ted Alexandro, I loved. Yeah, I mean, there was a ton of guys. I feel. Are we talking too much comedy? Are we no. talking too much shop? No. All no. right, I'm worried about the listeners. No, no fuck. See, that's the anxiety. <laughs> For real? For a great conversation, but I'm like, Wait, oh, is you, this boring people? What do, you, what do you think the listeners want to hear? I assume they just want to hear, like, you know, fun party stuff. Well, then we could do that. But all right, yeah, all right. We can do that. We'll, I mean, we'll I want to make we'll it natural. Fun party stuff in all a right. <laughs> I want to make it out. I'm just worried, you know? No, we, they, we're getting pretty inside no, here. Sadly, they like this part right now more than anything. What, this weirdness? <laughs> the, yeah, the yeah. fact that you're like, is this too much comedy? <laughs> yeah, just, you know, they they don't know who fucking Ted Alexander is or maybe even Patrice. No, they know. They definitely know who Patrice is. Okay. They definitely know who. They probably don't know who Ted Alexandro is. Yeah, but um, I mean, Todd Barry was huge. They, John they don't Mulaney. know who Nick Griffin is either, probably. Probably, which is sad. Because, He's amazing, dude. I toured with Nick. We did this thing called the Jameson Comedy Fe- Tour. Me, Billy Gardell, Steve Byrne, Nick Griffin, Danny Bevins, Pete Corielli, mm-hmm. and uh, was and he Michael drinking Loftus, then? Who 
Nick. No. Because I, I wish I'd known him. I heard when he was he was a drunk. I heard. Really? Yeah. No. He was sober, and we go. The first date I do with him is in Tampa, and I go up into the green room, and he's in the green, green room. And I, I've always had a problem with shirts, so I, I think I took my shirt off just to hang out. Mm-hmm. And he was like, uh, it's sitting there, and I go to start talking, and he goes, I'm, I'm going to let you know. I'm not going to talk. Wow. And I went, okay. And he goes, I just want you to know that I'm not going to be speaking. Yeah. I don't want to talk. And I went, okay. I go, hey, just so you know, I'm still going to talk. And he goes, good. We're fine. Uh... (laughs) And so I just kept talking and he just sat nodding his head. Uh... He's... He is. Uh, he found out our tour manager had fucked Penn Jillette, and he lost his fucking mind in the car. <laughs> you let Penn Jillette eat your pussy? Like, oh, he was going, wow. Oh, it was so fucking funny. <laughs> He's a cool guy. He really is fucking hilarious. Yeah. I mean, just efficient, brilliant writing. And he, he just put out a special, so that, that should oh, did he? check that out. Yeah. Well, he filmed it. I don't know where it's going to be, but he put it out himself and that's the cool thing about the way specials are, are the the accessibility to them these days it seems like there's more yeah and, and everyone goes oh there's I, so I was talking to somebody's like netflix is putting out 120 specials i know it's next crazy year. and you're like yeah who gives a fuck i still get to find great comedy yeah like gary goldman is a perfect example genius His special is fucking phenomenal yeah and because there's a lot of outlets, he gets to keep doing stand up. That's that's how it works now. It's like right. we all get to keep doing stand up. Like I'm shooting my next special in February and I'm like I'm like, yeah. And by the way, even if no one wants to buy it, I'll just put it out on YouTube. I yeah. don't give a fuck. I but feel the same way. It, that's the cuz I can't get better if I don't do another special. Right, right. And it's more content. Who gives a shit? This is like another movie coming out. Great. They keep you, coming. Did you drop all your material from the special? I'm still doing it on the road just to fill the time, but uh, I'm I'm probably got a new thirty, so I'm like halfway there. Okay, but it's yeah. tough, man. It's well, you it's, got that transition period from when you shoot it to right, when it comes out, right? And then even I, I stopped. I started when I did my special. I was so tired of that material mm-hmm. that I was like, "Please, anything." And I and the very first joke I started writing, dude. Can I tell you something really sad? I sure. figured out this weekend how to become a good comic. Finally, oh, this fucking weekend. Please. I, went, I went. So this is give it. me the tip. So for me, it's just for me. But uh, I have to work on a story for one year. I have to mm. work on one story for one year. It takes one year for that story to get good. And now, doing it every night. I have to do it every yeah, fucking uh-huh. time. I got to and and. I mean, the machine took the best machine story took me four years to figure out. Wow. Yeah, and so Jesus. And by the way, I just did a fucking tag in it this week. Cause I still tell it because everyone still chants it out. And so I did a tag in it this week that made me. I was like, why didn't I see this in four fucking years? Isn't why that didn't frustrating? I see this? That's yeah. why people don't get about comedy. It's yeah. so hard, and, and jokes never really end. Yeah, and then and then I go, like even like. This this zipline story was the first one I did. I put the special out. I, I recorded the special, and then I went on vacation with my family, and we went ziplining. And I went, all right, here's the new, here's the, my next story. Yeah, that was a year ago. Jesus, a, t- almost, t- almost, almost exactly a year ago, and now it's it was doing really well. Hey, so it takes me like a year. Like the one story I'm telling on Ari's storytelling show, I've been working on this story for probably two years, mm-hmm. and so I'm like, all right, this is. Have you done Ari's storytelling? I show? did. I bombed. I, I feel horrible about it. Did you really? What was I, the story? I have a. It's a great story, but it had no ending. And Ari was like, "All he needs is a good ending. Just don't worry about the story. Have a good ending." I'm Wait, like, what's the story? I, I had sex with my screenwriting teacher, and uh, I worked at a New York Film Academy. And uh, the, one of the teachers there. It's a long story, but uh, basically, my shower didn't work in Crown Heights, so I was. I went like a week without showering. I smelled like shit. My boss said, you got to shower. You can't come in. And so I was going around Wait, asking. Hold on. Hold on one second. You, you literally didn't shower to the point where people were like. Yeah, it was bad. You got to take a shower. I couldn't do it because I was doing sets at night. And then I'd wake up. You know, you go get home at three in the morning. You have to wake up at seven for work. So, you, you know, we run out of there. And we had no hot water. and We had no uh, electricity in our apartment every now and then. So I, it was snowing out. It was too cold to take a cold shower. And uh, so eventually I put a fucking pot on the stove. I boiled it in the dark, and I was like, I'm just going to take a whore's bath in the kitchen, get it over with. The lights click on after I'm sh- done showering. My fucking roommate cooks stovetop stuffing in the in the pot. So I've, now I'm covered in B.O. and, like, spices and shit and herbs. But I, it was too late. I had to go to work, so I had to run out. <laughs> you smell like stove I smelled like Thanksgiving. 
So I remember getting on the train. It was the four train. It was all, you know, I was the only white guy. And black guys were, like, standing over, like, hold on, hold on. Sniffing me. Hold on. You took a horse bath with a stovetop stuff? Yeah, well, the, it was, I put a pot on. I filled it with water and turned out it was dark. So I didn't know it was covered in corn <laughs> corn nuts and shit, cornbread. So you you're smell bad, but now you smell even worse. Now I smell, smell like, like herbs. a home-cooked meal, yeah. <laughs> It was brutal. So I now I'm desperate. I get to work and I'm covered in this film oh. and I got like little parsley pieces on me. <laughs> so I go up to everybody and one lady, the screenwriting teacher, <laughs> Mrs. Fritz, we'll call her. I oh. go, hey, look, uh, can I shower your place? She goes, sure, I don't care. And I was like, oh my god. And she was like kind of cute, like yeah. 40, 40 year old, quirky, weird earrings, big beehive kind of thing, yeah. hairdo. And uh, she was like, yeah, sure, just come over. But I'm having a dinner party at at eight. So if you don't mind getting out of there, I was like, you got it, whatever. So I get there at like six. I bring a bottle of wine to be nice. I get there. She has a beautiful apartment in Brooklyn. All like a fucking spread on the table. Just crazy setup, dishes, glassware, the placemats. And I'm like, oh my God. She's like eight things going on the stove, bubbling. I'm like, oh my God, she's really doing this. So I get in. I go, hey, look, I'll take a shower. I'll be out of your hair. No problem. She goes, sure, sure. But have a glass of wine. We don't really know each other. I have a glass of wine. We have two glasses of wine, three glasses of wine. We're talking about life and love and philosophy. We're going at it. And I was like, look, it's it's seven ten. I got to get in that shower. She goes, all right, all right. Well, are you hungry? And I'm like, I guess I'll have a, a bowl. She made paella. I was like, yeah, I haven't, I haven't eaten good in three weeks. I'll take a bowl of paella. So now I'm eating the paella. We have another glass of wine. I'm like, hey, look, lady, it's 730. I got to get the hell out of here. You're having a dinner party at 8. So she's like, all right, all right. So I get in the shower, and I'm hammered at this point. I've had like six glasses of wine. And I remember being in the shower, washing my body, and be like, this is so nice. And then I go, am I going to fuck this woman? No. What are you kidding? Get out of here. It's fucking, you know, 20 minutes till people show up. So I got out of the shower. Now it's like 7.48, you know. I'm like scurrying. Like, all right, I got to go. Thank you. And she goes, hey, have one more glass. I'm like, all right. And she's like, let me give you a tour of the apartment. We're walking around her apartment. She's showing me knickknacks and whatever. Now we're standing up on her couch looking at a painting on the wall. And uh, we're both looking at it. We're like face to face. And she goes, uh, you know what? And I go, what's that? She goes, I want you to come in my face. I swear to God. I want you to come in my face. And I go, all right. And now we're just going at it. We're on the floor rolling around, knocking coffee tables over and all this shit. Just fucking. And uh, she pulled this string or something. And all the lights went out in her apartment. And we're just going at it. And it was nighttime, just hot, dark sex. I wake up the next morning. There's blood everywhere. What? She was she was on her period, and I mean I just didn't notice it because of the dark. It was just fucking beat red crime scene thing. Yeah, and I had work the next morning, so I just had to like. So I went from being the cleanest <laughs> I've ever been to now I'm covered in uterine lining. So I had to just put on clothes and go go to work. And uh, I remember on the way out, she was like, "Don't you tell anybody?" And I was like, "All right, I won't." And I of course I told everybody right when I got in. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was it. That was my story. Oh, that's fucking great! But yeah, I bombed what? it on stage. It didn't. I'm not a story guy, so I, you know, I freaked not- out a lot. Yeah, I, I can tell I'm here, but on stage, I need those beats. You know, I'm a joke guy, so yeah. I, it, it wasn't good. Well, it's so funny. If I had your ability, I think I'd be a much better story guy. If I had your ability, I'd be a better story guy. No, I no. It's so funny. I was like, uh, I was saying to someone uh, the other day, I was like. Yeah, I totally forget that you need jokes inside the story. Sometimes, yeah. like sometimes for me, uh, I go I, if I can work it backwards. If I can get a good ending, mm-hmm. Ari and I talked about this a lot. Mm-hmm. If if you can get a good ending to a story, you can fucking figure it out. Yeah, like I have a, I have, but but then like I have this joke about I was one of the stories that will be probably on my special that I'm working on is about the time I jumped off the stratosphere. I was oh. the first person to jump off the stratosphere. In Vegas, yeah, yeah, holy shit! And so, uh, is it scary? Because I, I got an, all, I'm doing Vegas in two weeks, and they say, wait, hold on, you get a free stratosphere jump, and hold I could, on. I pushed out, I couldn't do it. Hold on, hold on, one second. Are you doing crapshoot comedy? Yes, oh, me too. Hey, hey look at that! I can't Fuck. wait. Tell's going. It's gonna be a good crew. Yeah, but I'm only there Friday night. All right, well, I'll see you. I gotta then. leave. I gotta leave and go to. I'm going to Bisbee to do something with Stanhope. Oh wow! Saturday afternoon. Fun. Yeah, but. uh but I guess we all leave Thursday. Yeah. Are, are you leaving out of L.A.? No, New York to uh, Vegas on Thursday. Okay. And but the I mor- arrive at like we'll all be there. 9 in the morning. Oh, in thir- Thursday? Thursday, yeah. Oh, good, good. I think we leave here um, We leave here at uh, like noon or something. Mm-hmm. 
Um, yeah, I'm fucking so excited. That's gonna be it's a good group. Good group. That's gonna be a shit show. It's gonna be fucking insane. Yeah, but are you, I couldn't do the stratosphere. I wussed out. I'm just scared of heights. It's, it's not that bad. Come on. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go and see people. Oh, come. Oh. But I'm not. Ugh. I can't do it. I just thinking about it freaks me out. What do you? Did you? Did they make you pick? Uh, uh, activities to do? Yeah, I'm you doing, doing the, like the roulette. I'm doing the buffet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing basically too. everything but the stratosphere. I mean, stratosphere, in my opinion, it is. Uh, you know, it's it's less about the the free fall or the jump. It's more about the actual jumping itself. Like uh. I, I used to always say that uh, it's one thing to say you've been bungee jumping, but to go bungee jumping and leap off a bridge. Yes, that's the difference. Like I I called them. Now you, I guess you can't say this, but bitch knees uh-huh. is that a lot of people jump and they just kind of crumble off. Like, yes, ah, yes, they basically fall off of it. But the last bungee jump I did, I leapt. Oh it was, my god! It's a very different sensation. But that that stratosphere jump, the hard part is getting off the edge. Yeah, that's the, that's the whole. Uh, but geez. once you go, once you fall, it's it's not that. Sixteen seconds. It's not that bad. Sixteen seconds. That's an eternity. Yeah, but it, you know what? It's a really cool sixteen seconds where you clear your mind uh, and you really. It's no thoughts. It's just like, oh, fuck, I'm doing it. Like oh a my real, god! A, a real a moment of of a realization of dreams. Like because all the, the day you do it, <clears throat> I'd only say to do it. This is the reason I'd say to do it mm-hmm. is that the day leading up, you'll be so scared and you'll realize all the things you want out of life. Interesting. Part of you will go, fuck this. Why am I doing this? All yeah. I really give a shit about is writing good jokes. Yes. All I give a fuck about is hanging out with my kids. Mm. I don't want to all I want to do is just go on a bike ride with my kids. That's what's fun to me. Yeah. Not fucking jumping off a building. Right. And then when you when you jump, as you fall and you realize you're not gonna die, you it's a realization of those dreams. And you go, Oh shit, <clears throat> I get to go bike riding with my kids. Uh-huh. I get to I get to eat pizza. Like the, right. the things right. that you wanted out of life. And when you land, there's no better feeling. Skydiving is even a little better in this sense that Rachel That's Ray told me this. Fall. She's like, oh, yeah. And uh, she's like, yeah, when you get done, you'll feel like you have a secret no one knows about. Whoa. And it's true. Rachel Ray, who knew she'd be the wise one here? She's a, she's a pretty pretty cool chick. Really? Yeah, she's pretty cool. Well, fat chicks are cool. <laughs> They're always the coolest ones. Do you find yourself, Do you find that you have to be edited in any sense of the way? In that Amy's becomes a spokesman for for liberal. Oh like, yeah, that that part's tough. Is it? Well, because you know she's my friend. I'm getting so much shit, by the way. But Amy Schumer presents all Reddit blew up. What What are you doing, Mark? Come on! I'm like, she's my friend. Comedy yeah. Central wouldn't give me a special unless she did it. So she's helped me out. Yeah. Like, don't you should be high fiving her. You know, yeah. if you're a fan of mine. But uh, I'm getting so much shit. But is it, uh, she gets a uh, like an ungodly amount of shit. Oh my god! I, I, like I talked to Jim Norton about this. He's like, I get more shit about being friends with her than anything. I, and he's like, I've blown dudes, and people give me more shit about being friends with Amy Schumer. That's crazy. It's crazy. People, she has so much hate. I don't know if it's like a woman thing because she's a woman, or the Trump stuff, or the gun stuff. I guess that doesn't help. But man, people give me shit, and she gets more shit, and she's still smiling, still walking, still doing great, and uh, she's a tough broad. Yeah, it's uh, that would break me. It, it would. It would. Like I went through that fat shaming shit with Segura. Yeah, and I was getting a great deal of like real, like a lot of jokes, but then real hate. Like guys really? who didn't know we were friends, just that are fans of Segura because he's so much bigger uh-huh. than me now. That, that especially at the time, I think a lot of people know we're friends now. But at the time, people just were like, "Yeah, who the fuck is this fat comedian?" Oh, Bert, Bert Chrysler, and they would say sometimes, and Segura got it too because there were parts, there were parts of our fans. Like I think we share probably, I mean, let's just say a hundred thousand fans. There's a that, let's say I have a hundred thousand fans. Segura's probably got a million. If I have a hundred thousand, Segura's got a million or okay. five hundred thousand. <clears throat> of that hundred thousand, we share definitely uh, seven hundred fifty thousand. Okay. Uh, and anyone who's a fan of mine yeah. is also a fan of Segura's. Right, right. But so out of his group, I got 100,000. There's a big group that just were just like, yeah, fuck this guy. And then there were a big group of my fans and our fans mutually that are like, fuck you, Tom. Like, why are you doing this to him? Not knowing that we're talking on the phone every single day mm-hmm. and we're comparing notes and we're talking about trying to lose weight. And right. That, you know, they don't know how close we actually are. But I, in the middle, I was getting fat shamed. One day, it was really, really bad. Really? And my, I, my my agent or manager called me and said, hey, man, you're trending about fat shaming. And it was 
the three people were me, Kesha, and Amy. Oh my god, that's hilarious! And, and it was about it was something to do with fat shaming. Yeah, and I guess I think <clears throat> Amy had posted a picture of herself coming out of the ocean, and Kesha had posted a picture of her ass. Mm-hmm. I didn't read Amy's because I don't really care to read. I don't really care to read the comments. Yeah, like, only based on the fact that I started reading Kesha's, and it was. It hurt me what people were saying about her. Well, it's, it's harder for a woman too. They were like, they were like why'd you fuck up your face? Uh, you're, you're, you're always going to be f- like. And I'm like, dude, I'm going. Where is this joy? Where do you yeah. get joy out of this? Right. Yes, that's what hurts the most. Like you're just trying to hurt me. That's what stings. Not the fact, not the words. It's the fact that you want me to hurt. That's weird to me. Oh, it was. I, I I was like, and then once again, I try to write a bit about fat shaming because i'm going through it yeah but man i was too fucking close to the flame damn because anytime anything i said was like people were like it's like if you talk about uh if you if, if i i don't know if you ever talk about something on stage and you you it's real so then you share something that kind of creeps everyone yeah, out yeah yeah totally and they're like what the fuck <laughs> yeah she's tough i mean the, you're right about she's super uh feministy like one time she was amy was like uh well i have to side with her because she's a girl and i remember thinking like that's just ignorant what yeah. if what if i did that oh well, trump's a guy white guy I'm <clears> in, you know like, well you, you know that's what happened in that election yeah of course is there there were <clears throat> there were guys that watched things like L- lena Dun- i have a real tough time listening to lena dunham well, I, who doesn't i i and i know that her and amy are friends and yeah part of me is like there's got to be something good about the chick but man she fucking like the just the Odell Beckham shit. I'm like, I'm like you can't. You that was can't, bad. Just it's you know my buddy Croy was a hardcore fucking. These are my views, and one of his views was don't ever polarize yourself. Don't ever stand in one thing because once you say I'm liberal, everyone's racist. I'm a feminist. Right, right. And then you do something a little racist, a little fucking yep, sexist. Yep. Then everyone's like, oh fucking burner. Exactly. Exactly. That's the problem with the left, and I'm I'm a liberal guy, but the left. They they're so hypocritical, you know. They're like, "Hey, you can't fat shame." The next joke is, "Look how fat Trump is," and then, yeah. "Hey, you can't slut shame." But this guy's fucking everybody. What a piece of shit! Look at this whore. Uh, Melania's a whore. It's like, well, what y- your your morals are all skewed. You won't you won't stick to one thing. You only shit on the people you don't accept. Yeah. So you're still fucked up. You're just doing it to people you consider bad. Yeah. I don't I I don't get offended. I just don't get. offended. I don't either. You cannot offend me, and I will not. And if any, I will laugh at anything if it's funny. Right. Anything. Same here. AIDS, miscarriage, whatever. Bring it on. I love it. Yeah. You name it. And and that's, I think that's where, I think, I don't know. I, it's, I, I can't imagine. I, I mean, I can't imagine what Amy had to go through. Because it was like, all of a sudden, all she was was just a comic for like, for like fucking the major part of the time. And then I think she gave like a speech and mm-hmm. every woman attached to it. I think right. that's what I what I saw was she gave like some speech or something and it was really moving. It was very honest and it was uh-huh. very vulnerable, just like a fucking comic would. And everyone jumped on and then she was like, fuck. And then there were a bunch of people that weren't even like fans. They were just like and then as soon as that happened, everyone who on the other side is like, fuck her. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean it's how it goes in America. You you're up here and then we love to tear you back down like a Ronda Rousey. I mean it happens all the time. They love Unless, like, I was saying to someone, you know who they, like, the never, I, I always figured, like, it's better to be a journeyman comic, where you just are a good, good comic, yeah. and you're making money, and you're not famous, and then one day you blow up. Right, As right. opposed to, like, Chris Rock. Yeah. You know, like, just working, 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 blows up, and then almost you're like, you're in. Because once you have this meteoric rise, mm-hmm. like, 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 say, an Amy or an Aziz, or, or like, someone who just, like, out of nowhere is, like, fucking awesome. All over the internet. Yeah. I think people just want... Like Dane. Yeah. Oh, look at Dane now. Jesus. I mean, that's Night like... Night and day. Fucking blows me away. Night and day. So, like, what do you... So, just out of curiosity, what do you see as, like, a party story? Like... <laughs> oh, jeez. Like, what, like, when you're coming over here and, like, and you're like, okay, well, uh, like, well... Let's see. The virginity like, story is pretty crazy. That's not really a party, though. Uh, I, I had a bad virginity story. Oh, really? Yeah, but my... Well, let me hear yours. Mine's fun. Oh, mine's... How, wait, how is it fun? <laughs> it's just a, it's a wild time. I've told this on a bunch of pods, so I'll, me, I'll, I'll make it short. But uh, it was New Year's Eve, Eve of the millennium. So oh, it's December up. 30 or 29th of Y2K. Yep. So we're like, all right, we got a big party on New Year's Eve in this field in New Orleans, but this night we'll go to the French Quarter, we'll go to Bourbon Street. How old, do are, you? It up. How old are you? I was 16. Okay. So uh, we go I'm, out. I think I'm exactly 10 years older than you because I was 20... I was 25... 
when at New Year's. Oh, there you go. Twenty five or twenty six at New Year's Eve. Yeah. So uh, we go to we go to Bourbon Street. You know, a couple of local kids yucking it up, and uh, this is before cell phones really. So it's me and I think five guys and two guys go. We just got fake IDs. We we're gonna go get daiquiris. Daiquiris in New Orleans are a big thing, and we're like, all right, and we just lose them. That was it. They were just gone. Yeah. Boom. That's that was the nineties, and uh, that so, was the nineties. People <laughs> would just disappear. They just disappear. You yeah. lost them. We're like, where'd they go? Ah, shit. We looked around for ten minutes and they were gone. Fuck it. So then, uh, then now it's me and two friends, and we're walking around. And this woman is on the on the balcony flashing, which is pretty you know par for the course. But she was kind of hot and just flashing freely. She had a leather jacket with no shirt under it. I remember it was pretty hot, and she looked kind of like a like a Jennifer Aniston after a fist fight, I'd say. And uh, she, we keep staring at her, and she goes, she looks down and goes, "You guys want to come up?" And we're like, "Fuck yeah, yeah. you know, let's do it." How we're, old is she? I'd say forty five. Oh wow, yeah, but she looked good still. She was hanging in there. Uh, she'd seen a few winters, but you know, she was hanging. And uh, so we go, we try to go, it was the Ramada Hotel, we try to go up, and the guy goes, you can't come in if you're not a guest. So we go back, we look up, and we, they won't let us in. She goes, I'm coming down. We're like, oh my God. You know, as a kid back then, as a teenager, no, no adult gave you the time of day, so this is crazy that she's talking to us. So she comes down, she's very maternal, like, how you kids doing? You guys want to come out and throw some beads? Are you, are you feeling good? We're like, oh, this woman doesn't want to do anything. Yeah. And uh, so my friend is like nudging me. He was like, just say something, just ask her, What's, what do you got to lose? So I just go, hey, look, lady. I don't, want to, I don't want to go into 2000 a virgin. And she puts her hand on my shoulder and goes, well, I won't let you. And I was like, oh, my God. So she's like, she brings us into the hotel. She goes, uh, puts us in the elevator, and she says, go to room 239. And then the door's closed. She's not in there. And we just go, oh, my God. <laughs> We're just a bunch of 16-year-olds. Oh, my God. We punch each other in the shoulder, headlocks. Oh, my God. So we get out of the elevator. We go to room 239. We wait 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. We're like, what the fuck? We're just sitting on the floor now. Finally, she walks up. I don't know what she was doing. Finally, she walks up. She opens the door. There's an old man with a white beard and a Harley Davidson hat and a leather jacket just sitting in a chair staring at the door. And uh, he goes, which one is it? And she goes, him. And she points to me. And he goes, all right. And we're like, what the fuck is this? Oh, shit. And she goes, he goes, you two. The old guy goes, you two, come out on the balcony. I got a, I got a case of beer out there in a cooler. And my friends are like... Uh, should we go? Uh, and I'm like, eh, just go, fuck it, whatever. So they go outside. He closes the French doors behind him. She walks up and shuts the blinds. So they're out there, and I, they're out. They're out of my life. So now she's like, uh, all right. So how do you want to do this? And I was, you know, young cocky kid. I go, well, I'll take a blowjob first. And she goes, I don't give blowjobs. And I remember saying. You- you pick up kids off the street, but you don't get blowjobs. <laughs> she didn't like that. And uh, she goes, uh, anything else? And I go, what? Well, are you clean? She goes, do you want to do this or not? I was like, all right, all right sorry. <laughs> I was clean? such a douchebag. I didn't know what to say. It's my first time. Are I'd never, you clean? Never been fucked, never been blown, whatever. So <laughs> I remember she said, you want to you make yourself a little more comfortable. And I said, all right. And I had a, a jacket on, a button down, and an undershirt. And I took the jacket off, you know, and I'm laying on a bed in jeans. And uh, she's like, well, I'm going to go in the bathroom for a second. She comes out completely naked. Naked with just socks on. I remember being like, oh my God, a naked woman. It was it, yeah. it was crazy. Good body? Great body. She had the uh, the ski slopes, like the banana tits. Uh, yeah, that yeah, was yeah, kind of yeah. weird, but uh, they were fine. And uh, she had the worst breath in the world, too, I remember. But uh, we're going at it, and she goes, do you have a condom? And just like out of a movie, I had the condom from the 40s, you know? Yeah. And she's like, eh, hang on. She opened the nightstand drawer. It's just lube, dildos, condoms, French ticklers, vibrators. I was like, oh, my God, what am I getting into? And she, she put the condom on me. And I remember I put my put my dick through the boxer hole because I was too nervous about her seeing my balls for some reason. <laughs> you know, I don't know why. Yeah. And we fucked for hours, maybe like two hours. I never came. I was too nervous. What do you mean you never came? I never came. I was just so... Like blown away the whole time. I never finished, and uh, she after it. I think because she's. I was a younger guy. I could last, and she was like, "We got to do this again." I was like, "I can, I can't." She's like, "Come on, what are you doing tomorrow?" And I, I had this wave of shame. I was like, "I got to get the hell out of here." And uh, I opened the door to the balcony. My friends fall in. They're hammered. And one of my friends goes, I got sloppy seconds. I'm like, no, and I'm just yanking him out. We, we, we get the hell out of there. We go to my friend's house. We pass out. And uh, the phone rings like 7 a.m. And, and I answer the phone, which is – that's very 90s too. It was a landline. I'm answering my friend's phone. You would never see that now. Yeah. So I answer my friend's phone, and it's my two friends we lost. And they go, you're not going to believe what happened to me. I'm like, you're not going to believe what happened to me. And they go, we met these two swimmers from UCLA. We fucked them. And I'm like, I fucked a whore, and she didn't charge me. You know? <laughs> so – and that was – I was king of high school for like two months after that. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's fucking crazy. That was virginity. Yeah, that was New Orleans, though. New Orleans is a wild town. That was fucking insane. Yeah. You, you had no girlfriend at the time? No, no. 
I was like a nerd, you know? Just a skinny skateboard kid. I love. Do you skateboard? I did. Yeah, I was pretty good. Really? Oh yeah. Oh, that I was skateboard. that was like my whole life before comedy. Really? Yeah. So, oh my god, that's fucking insane. Yeah, it was wild, man. I love those moments. Like, like I was with uh, Bobby Kelly in um, in uh, in Arizona. Me, Bobby Kelly, and our, our two agents at the time—a guy named Matt Frost and a guy named uh, oh, I know Vince. Frosty. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Matt Frost and this guy Vincent Nastry. Mm-hmm. Very. Very, uh, very fun guys. We were just, we just rented a Winnebago and we drove around the, we wanted to see the West. We had never seen the West, Bobby or I, or those guys. So we just drove all the way th- like through Utah. That's great. It was really great. It was, we're in, at a, um, we're at a hotel in Arizona. It was, it was a, by the Lake Havasu. And there's a woman on a balcony. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting talking to all the guys. And I just kind of catch eyes with her, and she she's maybe six stories up. Yeah, and she's in a red dress, and she just goes, Shh, like puts her finger to her lips. And oh goes, wow! Shh. And I'm looking at her, and she shakes her head no, and then she goes. Shh. So I'm just staring at her, uh-huh. and then she pulls her dress up, oh. and shows me, and then puts it back down and goes. Shh. Oh my and I god! Go, and I'm like, what the fuck? And then she walked inside, and I go, you guys, did you guys see that? Yeah. And they're like, what? And I go, that girl just fucking shushed me and. Flash me, and they're like, "No, I didn't see." It. I'm like, "Are you fucking kidding?" Oh, I lost my shit. That is so hot. So I wonder if that. I wonder if your sexual imprinting. What t- you got? What time you got to be out of here? You got to be out of here at. Uh, they told me ten, ten, fifteen, what you got, ten thirty. What, what all do you have going on? I got a crazy day. What do you got? I'm to, pitching a TV show right after this at TBS. Then I'm who doing. Do you know who to? T- uh, ah, shit, I don't. Okay. Then I'm doing at midnight, and then oh, I'm nice. doing a, another pitch after that with Comedy Central. Nice. Yeah. Uh if it's, I'm, I, I'm. Give me some name. I need an intro. I got nothing going in. Um, fuck, 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 Uh, I'll get the. I'll I'll do this off the thing. I think I'm gonna pitch into. Perfect. And he's cool. He's really cool, dude. Oh, great. Really cool, dude. I bombed. I I'm bombed the first three. No. Yeah. Well, they already passed. So. Oh, do how how have you? Pitched often? I, this is probably like my eighth show I've pitched. Yeah. The but thing, uh, the th- uh, this is, I learned how to pitch from Will Smith. Really? Yeah. So Holy shit. I, I, I'm pretty good at pitching, but the thing, my the key to pitching is don't let your agents and managers start the conversation. Okay. Do not let them start the conversation. You start the conversation. You direct it. And just like you would in stand-up, maneuver it into the pitch. Ah. So like, uh, so like I think the guy you're going into pitch to, um, like I think he's I think he's really fucking cool. I, I'm almost certain that's who it is. Um, but like like I go into a pitch, and I'll just I'll just very candidly just start talk. Like Will Smith and I, the first pitch that went well was at ABC, and he was like he told me he goes be yourself. Don't ever not be yourself. Mm-hmm. It, even if you think what you are is going to scare them, just be authentic to you, and 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 don't ever let them talk first you just really? start talking you just go in and you run the room you run the room mm-hmm. and so i walked into um to abc and I, the first thing i saw was this couch and we had the same couch in our in our fraternity house and i said oh my god by the way this couch is the best couch to knock yourself out on uh-huh. and like, what and i go you guys have never knocked yourself unconscious and they're like no <laughs> And I'm like, oh my god! In college, we the be- the best. You put your head up against the arm of this couch uh-huh. and punch your head. You got to keep your head stable. So this car- arm is a great arm. To- and Will Smith like starts smiling and just nodding at me. What like, exactly? Like just go in and drive it. Yeah, you go in. <clears throat> and even if like I've I've out pitched, I've outsold my pitch before. Wow. Like so, I've gone in and I went in one time and I was like, I was like, uh, I was pitching a show called. Um, I don't know what the point of the show was, but I go in and I said, yeah, I want to do, I so badly want to do a short of me and my buddy, Croy. Uh, he, I call him up. I'm like, dude, I think I have a dead hooker in my room. And he comes down and he comes over to my house. He's like, holy shit. What the fuck do we do? I go, you need to help me get rid of the body. So we carry, we wrap the body up in a, in a sheet and we take it upstairs. We put it into the trunk. He goes out. He gets a, sho- a couple shovels. And I'm like, man, I'm freaking out. And it, the last minute right before we shut the thing, she wakes up and goes, ah. and then Croy takes the shovel, hits her on the head and goes, that was a close one. <laughs> and the guy, we're laughing so hard. The guy goes, I'll fucking buy it. And I go, that's not my pitch. And he went, what? And I go, that's not my pitch. Oh, and he goes, no. That's, and he goes, 
what's your pitch? I told him, and he goes, oh, we're going to pass. And I went, oh, Fuck. that's I hilarious. my pitch. Wow. Well, just say, yeah, that's the pitch. That's it. Just yeah, go with I it. Should've, I should have. I should have. But I, So the next room I went into was uh, FX, and I was going to pitch the same show. It was, it was called uh, – it was called The Process. It was mm-hmm. a bad name. But it was about two filmmakers. Uh, this is right when filmmaking became easy to make. Mm-hmm. It was like, this is right around the, just past the millennium, 2002. Yeah. And two filmers get, filmmakers get the same log line. Uh, uh, bank robbery goes wrong. And they both got to make a three-minute short based on this same log line. But I'm the studio. I'm the, I'm the studio. I'm the finance guy. And so I make give them the same pitfalls that a studio would give. No, 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 no. I'll tell you, when I, when I see this, I see gorillas. And so right. they both got to add gorillas somewhere. Uh-huh. Hey, this is my cousin. He wants to be, he's gonna right. be in both your shorts. Yeah. And so that was the thing. So we go in. And that was – the guy passed on it. I go in the next one. And, uh, and they go – I go uh, – the guy goes, you did that show Hurt Burt. And I was like, yeah. And he goes, please tell me that's what you guys are pitching. And this girl, Marnie Huckman, is, goes, it is. And we just sold Hurt Burt without even having a pitch. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah, you know, we sold Hurt Burt with no pitch. Just six order episode. <laughs> yeah, six episode order. And you just got to go with the flow. You just go with the flow. But go in and make it very natural. Mm-hmm. Find something like find something in the room that reminds you of something, uh, something light that you can break this story yeah. with. Do not let your agents go... It just fuck, about, fuck it up all the time. They're like, so yeah. let me tell you about Mark. Yes, Mark, that's what they do. Mark tours with Amy Schumer. Uh, he is, he's got, yeah, he yes. goes everywhere with her. His He sees 10,000 people a night. I that's mean, he's a, got a fan base that's uh, basically Amy's fan base. Oh, you're yeah. saying the exact pitch, and we've done it four times, and it's don't, bombed. Don't let him do that. We'll, 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 so end this early. we'll end this early, and I'll help you. Oh, I'll, help you t- I'll help you figure out. I think I know exactly who you're pitching to yeah. at TBS. And oh, if you, wow. If it is, then just go in and go, I just did Burt Kreischer's podcast, and he said that if I play my cards right, you'll give me a glass of tequila at ten in the morning, and he'll be like, "All right, all right, perfect. <laughs> I'll do it for the pitch." We went in. We went in the last time we pitched. Me and him were going to pitch a show where I was. I think at TBS. We were going to do a show where I was the, I was the consulate directors. I was go in and I would be. Uh, I'm pitching. I'm selling this wrong. I was going. I was going to go around the world and basically set up embassies and throw a party for to the top. 10 countries that didn't like America. Ah. So I was going to get everyone to change their opinion about America that's based on me. That's a great pitch. Yeah. And, well, it's his idea. Oh, <laughs> it was his that's idea. a great idea. Well, it was, we all came up within the room, but he he came in and he was like, I want to do something in Russia. I want to send you to fucking Russia. Yeah. And so we kind of morphed it into this party event planner. Like, go in. I, I do a town hall meeting. I find out what they don't like about America. I, I explore their culture. And then the last night, I take those same people from the town hall meeting, and I throw an embassy party at my embassy, uh, and and I show them all the good things about America. Yeah. Like I get in and out burger, right? And, and I like, but by the way, we're in Turkey, and so <laughs> I get in and out burger flown in. I get or I get like a, a Italian Al's Italian beef right. shipped in, and we make it for them. And I and I have like one of our great entertainers, like John Cougar Mellencamp, someone yes. that connects with something in their culture. Yes. So, but uh, but we're not doing it. So, uh. but uh, yeah, well, let's get you out of here. You got a little time you need to leave. Uh, ten twenty. Okay, okay. We, we got, got, we got couple, time. We, we got time. Are you here? To, when do you go back to New York? Tomorrow, red eye tonight. Don't. I know. Why? I know. I got. I got. I'm doing foul on Thursday, so they they're getting me back in. To, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. This get, is a hard get, push. Get in the groove. Yeah. So oh, that but, stinks. I know. I love it out here. This place is. Great. And then what else? What other press are you doing? You doing Fallon to promote the special? Fallon, you know, Opie, Jim, doing the bonfire, doing all that. A bunch of like Sports Illustrated, uh, serious podcasts, all that. Sklar Brothers, all that so stuff. That's, Sklar Brothers is a good one. Yeah, they're good. Um, it's a it's a wild it's a whirlwind, and uh, I, would, I don't know I, how people do this. I wish you could do uh, hot ones. That was my favorite. That What's was that? Big, I don't know. I have a I have a real big theory on this business now. My new theory is. Fuck um, traditional publicist venues and find the shit you dig online that you keep watching mm. and then try to get yourself into that. Mm-hmm. So like I'm right now I'm obsessed with this show, Jesus and Marrow. Have you ever heard of it? No. Dude, it's so fucking good. It is so good. I am sh- I'm like I laugh hysterically at these two dudes. Two black dudes on Viceland and they just they're just I, I don't know if they do stand up traditionally, but if they don't, they fucking should. They're the two of the funniest guys, and their celebrity interviews are amazing. Are they just shooting the shit, or are they? I'll show it to you after this. All right, um, it's fucking, it's fucking next level. Uh, 
But what do you want to do in this business? I just want to be a stand-up. I want to be a Segura. Yeah. That's all I want. Segura's and never done anything. I know. He's, he's never done fucking anything. He's got the perfect career, if you ask me. Just a podcast and stand-up. Yeah. You guys do Tuesdays with Maury? Tuesdays, Tuesdays with, with Stories. Story. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's doing pretty well, but... uh you know, still, I I just love doing stand up. I want to I want to have fans. I want to go to a club and sell it out like like you or Segura or you know Rogan. Dude, I mean Rogan's huge, but Rogan's next level. That's but, another empire. Rogan's the 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 prototype for what we're all doing. Yeah, is he was like, and I and I got to be honest with you, I bucked it for a long time until him and Burr sat me down. They're like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, what are you doing on television? Yeah, like it's doing nothing for your career. Right, and in my head, I'm like, yeah, but that's that's the thing that we're supposed to do. And they're like, yeah, just do your podcast and just do stand up. I will tell you right now, because of that, because of following just what I like, just the things that interest me, not worrying about pitches, focusing on the weight loss challenge, and focusing on putting out videos, shooting a video, and just doing that shit, dude. I've I've had the best year financially, uh, really professionally. I haven't had one show that hasn't sold out this year. Not one. Hey, that's look at now, that. you know that, but that that is like, that is you know what it's like to be a comic and to do a fucking show with forty people on a Thursday. Yeah, and and to go and do like get one sold out show a weekend. Yes, and that's then, where I'm at now. And you're like, and you're excited, and then you get your numbers, and you're like, wait, I thought we had more people, and they're like, well, yeah. I, I papered the room. Exactly. Yeah, and, that's my story right now at Columbus. That happened to me. Yeah, well, that, but Columbus is a, such a great comedy town. Yeah, but the thing is, is like, I don't know, I. Your your fans will find you. I don't like. Yeah, you can't ever go like like I used to open for Jay Moore, and I, I used to think, oh, this will be great. I'll just well, I'll get some of his fans and yep, come see yep. me. That never happened. Never happened. You Schumer's need, people, I, they never came on board. I don't know if I don't know if her fans are legit comedy. Fans. Exactly. It's like a hot lot of hot girls who are like, we love her. Yeah, it's it's like they're fr- that's their Saturday night. Exactly. It's a bachelorette party. Let's stand up for ourselves. Let's right. go see Amy. I got more from Louis. That was one thing. Well, I opened for Louis for a while. That's and that was like that's legit, comedy people. That's yeah. legit comedy fans. That was huge. That's legit comedy fans with fucking money. Yes. That's what you want. Yes. You smart want, white people. You want... <laughs> yes. Not, you know, not that all white people aren't smart, but you know, very good comedy fans. They get comedy. They're savvy. Yeah. So that was nice. That's fucking... What's it like we're opening... What's, uh, the difference between, what's the difference between opening for Louie and opening for Amy? Well, Amy's amazing because she's like a friend. I've known her for a while. We're like tight kind of... And also, she just no. There's no... Uh, what's the word? Like... No holes barred on the on the amenities. You know, you get the private jet. You're in the Four Seasons. It's a black town car to the gig. You get your helicopter back, whatever. And the food is insane, and the drinks, and blah blah blah, and whatever the thing is in town. She'll get that all that like the delicacy. She'll get it ordered to the theater, and you're in and out, and you're you're home the next night. It's amazing. But uh, Louis is just like this comedy guru. So you're just like trying to soak up as much wisdom from him while you're around him and uh just the nicest guy laid back a normal guy humble guy you know and he gives you you can do joke tags i'm like i'm gonna go do a mic and he's like i'm going with you and you're like what he's like yeah yeah where is it i'm like well there's probably gonna be 12 people there and he's like let's go and so now you're in a town car on the way to the mic with louis ck he's the coolest shut the i mean amy if i asked amy to do a mic she would spit in my face you know (laughs) And I get it. That's just she doesn't need to. But Louis's like, I got this new idea. I want to ch- test out. And well, it's very different. They're they're very different celebrities in the fact that if Louis wants to go do a open mic, everyone sits and goes, oh, "Shut up, Louis C.K.'s here." If Amy does a mic, everyone's like, "Holy shit, Amy's here!" and pulls out their phone and photo, records photo, it. yeah, exactly. And, and so it's like you can't. There, she doesn't get to do that anymore. Right, right, exactly. But yeah, I opened for him for his Netflix special. Was like. <laughs> A huge honor, you know, and hers too. That was an honor, but I just know her, so it's not as weird. But with Louis, funniest story, I was at the back of the comedy cellar. I get off stage. It went pretty well. And he goes, hey, good set. I go, oh, my God. Thank God I didn't know you were here. I would have freaked out. Yeah. And then he goes, Can you get 20 bucks? And I go, shit. And I opened my wallet. I had 120 in it. And I was like, here you go. And he goes, all right, I'll be right back. And he had to tip some guy. And he came back and he goes, shit, I'll pay you back later. And I go, eh, whatever, you know, Louis, I got it. And then he goes, uh, you know what? You want to open for me tomorrow at Town Hall? And I go, yeah, and that was it. And that's how I started opening for him. Shut so you never know. Up. You never know. By the way, this well, some young comic will hear this and go, all right, this is what we'll do. We'll pickpocket Louis so he doesn't have to follow him. <laughs> yeah, I'll wait yeah. by the door. Yeah, exactly. God, that's fucking awesome. You never know. Yeah, he's you know he's he's the best. He really is. He's uh, he was he's one of those guys that like I, I knew him when I, I opened for him a long time ago, like right when I first had Georgia, and uh, I hadn't seen him in a long time, and I saw him at the. I saw him at the store the other night, 
and he just popped in and they're like, hey, Louis C.K. is coming up next. I go, oh, okay. And so I was like, yeah, this next guy's the reason I'll probably stick around and have a drink and watch the, sh- the rest of the show. Yeah. So I go, put your hands together for Louis C.K. And he comes up and he's like, like you know, when he like says something to me as he gets them, like, hey, man, it's good seeing you. And I was yeah. like, oh, yeah, yeah. And then he's like, very funny guy, very sweet guy, Bert. That's fucking great uh. comic. And I was like, in the back, I was like, you didn't need to say that. Yeah. You just made my fucking night. Right. Like, don't you want to be that guy? That's what I want to be the guy where you say something nice and people go, Oh, he, look at look what you said about me. So you know, nice. I just, I, all I care about, I, you know what? I was thinking about this the other day. I was like, you have it. I think I have it. It's the a comic that everyone likes. Uh, I'd say I, I'm, I'm big on that. Yeah, like I, I, I don't need to be, I don't need to be the one everyone comes in to watch. I right. really don't. I really rather not. I don't want to what Bill Burr has. I hate when comics watch me. Uh, yeah, like every, Bill goes up and everyone goes in to watch him. Sure. I don't need that. I really don't. Rogan's that way. I want to be the guy that everyone's like when they see me they smile. I'm yes. Like, oh, what's up, man? Me too. And I feel like I, I feel like I'm I'm that guy. I feel like yeah. you're that guy. Definitely. Big Soder J's that guy. That, Soder's yeah. that guy. Yeah, definitely. Ari's not that guy. No, but I <laughs> but I, I smile when I see Ari. But like, yeah. But Segura's not even that guy. Like no, Segura, you're yeah, right. Segura's like he, but he doesn't ever want to be that guy. Well, those guys are almost too. And I hate to use the word they're almost too real. Yeah. We we will kind of sacrifice our own comfort to make others feel better yeah. i think that's an anxiety thing maybe a self-worth problem we have but if if they're happy we're happy you know i think with Segor, he's just like i'm just gonna go in do my shit and leave oh like, yeah he's he is uh like literally almost just so like that i'm trying to think of the right word but like he'll he'll call in the store and be like get me on early so i don't see everyone so yes. i don't stick around see i'm kind of jealous of that because i he, wish i could be like that i wish i could too because my life is consumed with how others are feeling no but Segura was a lot like you like Segura toured with a lot of really big names mm-hmm. when he was younger like when he was probably your age he was doing russell peters rogan oh really yeah and he was traveling the world with them private jets yep and uh and then but he I, he had that Netflix that pop. Netflix thing blew him up yeah and then his next and then he kept doing him and now he's doing another one and he's and now and he's someone that you know by the way he's massively fucking talented and yeah he works very funny really fucking hard oh yeah and he's generous as fuck oh is he to openers yeah oh my god like <laughs> I can't like I worked with some guys the other day and I was like hey man what am I supposed to tip out people. And he's like, well, I'll give him $5,000. What? Like, what? Oh, my God. Yeah, he didn't say that, but I, yeah, just, yeah. I just want to put that out there. And All right. Just- <laughs> he's a good day. We we had a little beef thing happen. Uh, we were I was at a bar with a bunch of comics, and we were telling, like, street jokes. Yeah. And I was like, that's a funny joke. And I told it on Opie, and the fucking Twitter went crazy. Like, that's a Segura joke, you motherfucker. I can't believe you're stealing from Segura. And I was like, ah, I don't know this joke. What I didn't know. It was a joke. It was about, like, uh, it sounds like a street joke. It's like. I uh, got a prostitute the other day. It was 50 bucks. After we finished fucking, I said, where's the 50? Or something like yeah, that, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. like a misdirect. Yeah. And it sounded like a street joke, so I just told it as a street joke, and the fucking Twitter went crazy, and then he hit me up, or I hit him up or something. I was like, hey, I just went... Oh, I got his number from Ari. And I was like, all right, give me Segura's number, because I want to squash this immediately. Yeah. So I called him, and he was just cool as a cucumber, just like, hey, hey, uh... I, I don't think you stole it. I, I you know, what it, it happens, whatever. And I was like, hey, I'm a big fan. I respect you. I don't want you to think I'm stealing. I'm not a joke thief, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah. So that was it. But it was that I got a taste of what it sounds or feels like to be a joke thief just from that Twitter blowing up. Oof. And I can't even imagine what these other people go through. Yeah. Joe, we're the, the problem with comedy is we are we are a pirate ship. Like, yeah, it's not, it's not the problem. It's a good thing. But like, we are a pirate ship. It's we have pirate ship laws. Mm-hmm. So like when we do find out someone steals, we handle it internally. And then but but when it gets out, that's when it goes fucking oh, ballistic. People get crazy with it. Because we introduced them to it. Like I guess so, Rogan, we, really. Yeah, yeah, with the Carlos Mencia thing. Yeah. They were like, Oh, I didn't know you couldn't people were like literally when that came out, people were like, Yeah, but he tells it better. Yeah. And you're yeah, like, yeah. No, no, that's not how that fucking works. Right, right, yeah. That's yeah. not how that fucking works. It's not oh so and and but yeah, I mean comics, that's all we fucking talk about backstage. We're just yep. sitting there like, Hey man, when you hear this fucking dude telling that bit, and you're like, Oh fuck. Yeah. I know, yeah, but I've been stolen from it. Sucks dick. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I guess that was a big thing. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's happened a bunch. I've I've been stolen from because I'm also that's there's a big flaw that me and you have. We're good guys, so people feel sometimes like they can take liberties mm, with us because we yeah. won't say anything, right? Or we're like we're not going to want to rock the boat. Oh, no I'll rock the no boat one's, on No that. one's stealing from Rogan. 
No, that's a good point. Yeah, no, it's yeah. People look at me and they're like, "Oh, I remember hearing one person say sometime he'll probably forget he wrote that." Because <laughs> I, I write pretty quickly and I write on stage. And yeah, it just, and I remember Segura telling me that. Segura told me distinctly that person said that you write more material in in a year than they'll write all their life. Yeah, and that you'll probably forget you wrote these things. Plus the booze. Yeah, and I'm and I'm yeah, and so right. and I was like, I remember hearing that going. That can't be healthy. No, no, no. I, I had a guy hit me up on Facebook and goes, some guy's doing your bit verbatim. I took a video of it. Here it is. Unbelievable. Stole the bit. I was crushed. I'd never had it happen before. It killed me because he worked so hard on this shit. Mm-hmm. So I emailed the guy and I said, hey, and I, I sent him like a page long thing of like, what'd you get in this for? It's all about your point of view. It's all about your opinion and how you see the world. What's the point of just stealing shit? And he wrote back, you're right. I'm sorry. I'll never do it again. And that was it. Oh, I, well, I, what happened to me is I was getting stolen from so much that I was like, that I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to nip this in the bud and I'm going to write stuff no one can take. I'm going to take, I'm going to do a 12 minute fucking story. I'm going to do, and and that's really what got me into storytelling because I was having these jokes that were mediocre at best. Yeah. That were jokes, you know, uh, Karen and cucumber up the ass joke, you know, like, uh, like that whole set list right there, all very stealable. Uh huh. And then, and then I, and then finally I was like, well, no one's taking my Disneyland on acid. No one's taking that. No one's taking the machine. No one's taking this. And then oddly enough, some, 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 but like, but I don't know. Uh, she's got a huge toe. Me? Are you well endowed? No, no. Come on, that toe is like three inches wide. <laughs> no, I'm that not. That's a all. crazy toe. You got big feet. Yeah. I, it's sad. I'm obsessed with penis size. <laughs> so, uh, so let's. Uh, as we've been on about, about an hour and a half. It's tw- it's ten twenty. Oh get, shit! Yeah, okay. here for your meeting, and I Thanks. do want to talk to you about your thing. pitch or yeah, whatever. Yeah. 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 So uh, I've said at the very beginning of the podcast, we didn't mention it much, but your hour special this oh. this week on Comedy Central. Friday night? Friday at midnight. Friday Don't at be midnight. yourself. Just what? Don't be yourself is Don't what it's called. Don't be yourself. Yeah. It's a great special. I I've watched it. it beginning to end. Thanks. It is phenomenal. That means a lot. It I really is. It. And I sat with my wife and watched it. Wow. And giggled hysterically. Was she offended by anything? No. Okay, because a lot of girls have had problems with us, with some of the lady material. Really? Yeah. No. All right, great. My wife doesn't get like that. I love it. Um, so everyone check it out. Mark, I appreciate it, man. Thanks, I'm man. I'm going to hit you up. when I, I want to get your number. I don't think we have numbers. No, give, but I wanna it, get, get your number. number when I come to New York, I want to fucking hang. Let's hang. Yeah. We'll do a diner hang. Oh, well, I wanna, I'm going to organize a hang. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to organize a fucking dinner for all the New York comics I want to yes. hang out with. Yes. We'll get like a private room yes. somewhere. Yes, that's gold. Fucking wasted, get I love high, it. I and love just it. bullshit and gossip. That's a that's a date. That you know what that already is inviting someone going. How come I wasn't invited? Uh, you're right. The best, by the way, the best thing I heard a Soder told me one of the best things besides the Joe List shit in the shoe story. Yeah, was he was talking about. Uh, Nate Bargatze didn't get invited to Patrice's uh, barbecue one year. Oh yeah, and, and Nate reached out to Soder and was like, "Dude, can you get in touch with?" Patrice and see if he doesn't like me. And so Soder's like, hey, man, Mark's concerned because you didn't invite him. Is it okay if he comes? And Patrice goes, man, that guy doesn't believe in dinosaurs. Of course I want him at my party. Uh, <laughs> Anyone who doesn't believe in dinosaurs, I want to hear what he I've, has to I've say. I've heard that. That's so funny. That yeah, fucking great? Nate's so religious. I'm like, what are you, crazy? Well, dude, congratulations on the special. Oh, hey, it thanks, man. It is fantastic. Man. It is fucking awesome. And uh, I'll watch your – I'm going to definitely watch your – what What you doing Thursday night, Fallon? Yes. Thursday night. This is coming out Wednesday morning. So everyone, yes. watch the, watch Fallon on Thursday. Watch his special on Friday. I can't believe they let me get away from some of the material on Fallon. I had to fight for it. For real? I've got like boner in there. I've got like some anti-relationship stuff. It's heavy stuff. Shut the fuck yeah, up. Yeah, on NBC. So that'll be fun. Fuck yeah. Well, congratulations, man. Thanks. Thank you for doing this. Thanks. For, and listen to my podcast, Tuesdays with Stories. Oh, yeah, with Joe List. Yes. By the way, I got it. You got to introduce me to Joe List. I, oh, sure. Because he met that story of him shitting in the shoe yeah. <laughs> made me laugh so fucking hard well he's different now but yeah he's a good guy i heard him on ari's podcast oh yeah and, and i was i listened to the whole fucking podcast the herpes. It was fucking, yeah it was yeah. fucking fascinating yeah he's a good egg yeah awesome, man. thank you thank you